Hey peeps, happy Sunday. How is everybody? Let me know if this lighting gets too annoying and I can bring the blind down a little bit, but hopefully it's okay. I'm gonna also, hopefully that's what I'm wearing. I got asked so many times last time that I thought I would uh, get the pattern out this time so I can just flash it at you guys whenever I get asked. So Wendy is here. Julie is going to come back later. And Nicola is in the conservatory cleaning out the conservatory, which is um, very commendable of you if it's that hot up there. But it is for a sewing area. So it'll be worth it. You can hear mum is sewing in the background. She's finished her goslings. So oh, fluff in my mouth. Okay. Uh, we've got Leslie is here, Debbie is here, good morning. Sal has arrived, hello. Lynn's here. How is everyone this morning? I am already unpicking. I've actually been down here for about 45 minutes, which was slightly too late to go for a walk and get set up on time but it was too early to then sort of like be set up and not do anything so i've already interfaced the waistband for the skirt pressed under the skirt lining the skirt waistband lining and uh yeah just need to unpick it from the bodice of the dress because i did not like how this one turned out Judy's here, Sandra's here, Sarah's here, Harriet, Dana, Helen. So some very clever soul, because you know I was talking about us all kind of doing the same sort of project at the same time in one of the live hangouts. Some very clever soul suggested the closet case patterns poof, which I think is a really good idea because it's piecework, which it would be nice to have mum here to give me some instructions. It's something that I want to make. I have already collected a bag, a very small bag, but a bag of things to go in it. And it would be nice to have the kind of finished article down here to stuff as I go along. Um, so what do you guys think? Uh, you obviously don't have to, you know, I'm gonna have the hangout live, um, it, you know, you don't have to be doing the closet case patterns poof whilst, whilst we hang out. But I just thought a communal project might be fun. So I will link to the pattern in the description box on the video later. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, Judy's here, Louise is here, Lauren is here. Hello and welcome. So, yeah, how's everybody been this week? What have you been up to? They're saying hello to you as well, Mum. Oh, hello! Nancy's here, Michelle is here, Cibele, Caroline. <laughs> so, welcome. Harriet thinks it's a good idea for the closet case. I'll say it again a little bit later on um, and I'll announce it in the peeps group as well. But yes, it was some very clever soul on the last hangout. She commented afterwards in the comment section and I cannot remember who it was, but I said that she was a genius and she is because that would be a perfect pattern to do during the hangout, which is awesome. Laurie's here. Chris. Christy is here. Hello. Rachel's here. Hello. Good morning. How is everybody? I keep saying the same thing, don't I? I've like broken record. <laughs> Feels rude not to, though, when new people have arrived. What's everyone doing today? I know that Nicola is clearing out her conservatory. Caroline says it's a little bit cooler in Guildford, which is nice. Good 
just unpicking the back stitching, which is always the worst part. So uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea because I like I, I really want the closet case poof, and you know, until I kind of worked out that I could make it in that textile uh, textile express velvet, the peacock velvet. I was really stumped what to make it in because I was thinking faux leather or a tapestry, but Shiana likes to pluck, um, especially faux leather. So given the opportunity, she would have destroyed it within within seconds, and with the tapestry as well, it would it would have the fabric would have pulled really easily. So they were both things that I was just like, well, not willing to put some effort into this for Chi just to just to mess it up within seconds. But the velvet, she may well pluck it, but I think it will survive survive that better than the faux leather would and the um, tapestry fabric would. And then also it matches in really nicely with... Oh. I'm sorry, it matches in really nicely with the cushions that I've made. So, yeah, I thought that was a genius idea. I'm going to... Pull the stray bits of thread out of this now. Fun times. I cut this um, dress out at the beginning of the month and it's just kind of been cursed since then. Like nothing's quite gone right with it, but I think I'm going to very much like it as a skirt. And I am going to remake the 6130 because I do really like the bodice of that. I just think I need to pick a better fabric combination than I did this time. So definitely not the pattern's fault it was just in my head it was a good idea but I needed this border print was too big and needed to have if I for, for the idea I had to work it needed to have a, a solid bodice without a, a midriff seam in it so never mind never mind it will look lovely as a skirt I'm excited to have it as a skirt so Rachel says, I'm good, thanks. Been in the garden this morning, social distancing with my dad. It was so lovely to see him, but too hot to be outside now for me. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad you got to see him. Wilson is braving Regent's Park today with um, one of his bands that he plays with because they haven't seen each other, obviously, for three months now. And... Um, at a social distance obviously and um, but yeah he's um he's having to get up early he's turned into a proper little night owl whilst uh, we've been in lockdown not getting to sleep till seven o'clock in the morning which not fun especially not fun when they make him go back to work his boss rang him the other day and said we're trying our best to get you out of furlough as soon as we can and he was like i've kind of got used to it he obviously didn't say that to his boss but he said it to me he was just like i've got used to it i won't get back to work I like getting paid for doing video games and playing guitar all day. So, uh, yeah. But he's sitting friends at a responsibility show for social distance. I did say I was jealous. I mean, obviously, I'd like to see him, but um, it would be weird to see him at a social distance and, and then have to say goodbye. That would be odd. Um, but also, I, you know, none of my friends, um, my close friends live on the Isle of Wight, so... It would be, I'm, you know, I'm jealous that he's getting to see friends because that would be nice. But soon, hopefully, and safely, we shall see. We shall see. So I'm just trimming off the excess interfacing. There we go. I'm actually sewing right from the get-go. I think that's maybe the trick is to start start doing something before I go live, and then then I'm doing it whilst I whilst I uh, whilst I talk to you guys. <laughs> um, so Dubele says, just got back from visiting my family. It was a short visit, but good for my mental and emotional health. Oh, that's so lovely. Sandra is quilt planning. Judy says, scrub bags, then afternoon pattern sun hat for going back to school. Nice. Edi Edi Emily says, hi, this is my first hangout, so excited. Hello and welcome, we have fun here. Louise says, me, I have to sacrifice my sewing room and I have too much stuff and don't know where to put it. Oh, well, oh no, Louise, how come? 
Eddie and um, Eddie and Emily says, "I mean, my first KB hangout. No worries. Is it is it Emily or is it Eddie? I mean, I can keep calling you Eddie and Emily, but it, let me know. I probably will forget about five minutes later, though. So you know, there is that too." Elizabeth says, morning, just joined in this morning. Why, what are you unpicking? I am unpicking the skirt, circle skirt that I made from a border print that was on the bodice of the 6130 dress. And I just didn't like the combination. I think I might have answered that since you asked the question, but yeah, that's why. Uh, Leslie says, was out in the garden this morning doing a bit of weeding, but got too hot. Nice problems to have, hey. Helen says, went fabric shopping today for the first time in months and we only have one actual COVID case left in New Zealand. So something to really celebrate. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Uh, Sal says, I got my CPAP machine this week. Love sleeping better and longer. That's good. Dad said his was life changing. So you'll have to let us know how you get on. And Caroline says she's glad about that to Sal. Faye is here. Hello, Faye. How are you, my lovely? Leslie says, been stung on my foot. Ouch. Oh, no. Caroline says, I have washed my Lady Mapparo lawns and they're out on the line. Would love to see my, I would love to see my son. Yeah. It, Eddie and Emily, it's Emily. Hi, Emily. I thought it might be, but I didn't want to assume. <laughs> Deb says, I'll be on property soon, just been to pick up my Sunday lunch from my favourite place we opened this week. So I thought I would, it would be rude to not to now support them. Definitely. Sharon is here. I'm trying to make the sew over it, Betty, but unfortunately I can't get it to fit me. I struggled with that one as well. It's drafted for a very different shape to me. Michelle says, I just woke up, lol. It is very early there, Michelle. So thank you for joining us. Louise says, my granddaughter is moving in, so it's a good in a good cause. Oh, that is a good cause, Louise. Still, it's sad to lose your sewing room. Sal says, do you want a picture of the machine on the Peeps group for your dad to see? Um, let us know what brand it is, because it may well be the same one, but... Um, I wouldn't put that in the peeps group because I think it might just confuse people. They'd be like, what, what, why, why is there a CPAP? Caroline says, I have a twirl of both the Betty and the Eve bodice to tack up to fit later. Nice. I am going to get this done today. I haven't even touched the back neckline, so I'm going to attempt to do that with you in here. <laughs> It'll be fine. Oh, I haven't unplugged the phone. Let's do that, because if the phone goes, it will kick you guys off. And that would not be good. Oh, I don't know why that suddenly sprung to mind. I'm glad I remembered, though, because we have had a phone call already this morning. It's weird, isn't it? Oh, just threw the scissors on the floor. Um, Joanne says, good afternoon from sunny West Yorkshire. Hello, Joanne. How are you? Michelle says, yes, it's very early here, debating what to do today. Duvalo says, I bought back some rhubarb from my mum's garden. So now I'm thinking when I'll make be making the rhubarb pie. Ooh, nice. Uh, Emily says, with how hot it is, I wanted to make a few dresses and skirts for work, but not sure it would be good for back admin office in hospitals. Not sure what would be good for a back admin office in hospitals. Any ideas? Ooh. I mean, if you ask me, it's going to be vintage inspired big 50s style skirts. Um, do you have to cover your arms? Do you have to have your like your shoulders covered? Um Yeah, what are your, I mean, is it is it smart casual? Is it smart? Is it, yeah, I, I mean, I, when I worked in an office for Churchill, I had to, there was no midriffs allowed, I had to cover my upper arms and I had to cover, it was it had to be longer than knee length. Um, I actually, I actually got a, quite a few 30s, sort of 40s, 30s style dresses from, 
uh, next of all places at the time and then some shoes and like a whole matching outfit and that was my first kind of proper look at myself in vintage inspired things and I really liked the look um, I'm not sure how I kind of gravitated towards 50s I think it was more because of the the, the giant giant skirts which as you know is a favorite of mine but yeah what are your what are the requirements for you for your office wear um caroline says we've given up using the main lines it's only ever making calls everyone else calls our mobiles yeah joanne says good thank you i'm finishing crocheting my toft sheep while watching how are you I love the toft animals. I think they're brilliant. Right. Okay, so this skirt is pinned in. I think I might just ease the waistband in a little bit more. We've got a little bit of a ripple. I don't know how I've managed this. It's probably because it's such lightweight fabric and I hung it up on the pinchy pinchy hanger to let the bias drop on the skirt. But one of the back pieces is about an inch, two inches longer than the other back piece. And they were cut at the same time, um, you know, from the same pattern piece. So I'm not quite sure how that's worked. And I was gonna trim it down. I've already bound the edge. I was gonna trim it down and um, rebind the edge, but I've just decided that I'm gonna be really lazy and I'm gonna sew this with a, a wonky back seam because, the, yeah, I can't be bothered. I think this fabric has just tormented me every single step of the way. So I'm just being like, I just wanna get it done kind of thing. I have a feeling that it's gonna to need to be re-leveled as well, which I'm not overly looking forward to. But never mind. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Michelle says, you're all having our heat and we've been having all your your rain and grey skies. Yeah, it's been absolutely beautiful here. Uh, Emily says, it's just smart casual. Um, what kind of style do you like wearing? That's the other thing, because as I say, if you if you if you ask me, you're gonna get recommendations for like the 8577 big skirted shirt dresses and things like that. Um oh the McCall 6696 might be a good one because it's a shirt dress and you can make it in funky fabrics, but because it's a shirt dress, it feels a little bit more formal. I really enjoy wearing that dress. Yeah, it's this side is just stretched stretched out by that much, and I'm not gonna um, I'm big, I'm not gonna cut it off and rebind the edge because I've already done that. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be lazy and just fudge it. The inside of this skirt is not gonna be beautiful. I won't be showing anyone that. <laughs> Uh, Caroline says, I have the sew over Doris dress cut out for office wear, just lengthened it. Oh, that's a really good one. Again, yeah, that would be a good one for office wear. Sal says, the name of the machine I have is the BMC Luna IQ Auto. I have no idea what dad's got. I'll have to ask him when he floats past at some point. Claire says, the sew over vintage shirt dress would be good for the office. Yeah, I have heard that that's quite low cut, but I, I have the pattern. I just have, well, I bought the pattern from mum, so we have it in the house. I haven't made it yet. So I don't know for definite, but I have heard it's quite low cut. Uh, Emily says, I tend to like the 40s style. Also, the, Dor the Doris dress would be a really good one for that. And the um, the shirt dress. So, uh, yeah, uh, other, 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 other ones. Oh, you could try the Eve dress, but not, not the floaty, fluttery sleeves and the high-low hem. You could go for the... Um, the straight hem and the straight sleeves. Although again, I haven't made those and I have heard that sew over its sleeves come up quite tight. So you might want to make a muslin first. Christine is here. Bonjour peeps. Bonjour Christine. It's um, good morning over there, isn't it? Um, no, no, yeah, bonjour. 
<laughs> I was going to say that's gone completely out of my head. Oh dear. Oh dear. Andy is here from all the way from Cornwall. I think I got that right. That fabric, you, that lemon print fabric you got from Truro Fabrics was stunning. I resisted though and didn't ring them to see if they had, could get any more because I don't need any more lemon print fabric. <laughs> And I don't need any more fabric. I'm trying to be good. I am trying to be good. I have so far, the offer's going on till the end of this evening, but I have so far resisted the lady, uh, the Sherwood Fabrics offer this weekend. It's, if you spend 80 pounds on fabric, they will send you six meters of Lady McElroy fabric for free. And it will be two, two meter pieces. Two of them will be stretched and one of them will be a cotton lawn. I have so many Lady McElroy prints that I'd be worried that I'd get something that I already have um so I am resisting the order although there are a couple of viscose twills that I really really like and would would would, would like to buy but I I'm I don't think I'm going to go for this offer because whilst it's a really good offer I'd just be worried that I'd get a repeat of something that I already own because I have so many <laughs> I haven't so if you spend eighty pounds at um, Sherwood Fabrics, they will send you six meters of free fabric, Mum. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, Caroline says I've been. Oh, excuse mm -hmm. me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Caroline says I've been measuring all my cottons and viscose this week and going through the cabbage for scrappy hexagon quilt for my bed. So I'm back to cutting out papers today. Um, Caroline says, or a tea dress, love the 40s for office wear. I'm an accountant. Actually, yeah, the the six, six, where is it? Do I have it down here still? No. I've got a pile of patterns there that I need to alter, um, but not that one. I think I put it away the other day. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Andy says, of course you do. <laughs> Yeah, I need more fabric, like I need a hole in the head, but yeah, you're right. Gin and Pins is here. Susan, right? Hello, peeps. I'm hand sewing the facings down on my hot off machine, a hot off machine staple vest, which I will wear later. Next, I'm going to adjust that neckline on the Vogue 9253 a la Emily Horman. Is that the Vogue pattern that everyone went crazy for last year? I think it is. And he says it worried me that I'd get something I really didn't like. Yeah, that would be that would be my issue as well because there are a few Lady McElroy prints that I'm not a fan of, and just because they're, they're not to my taste. I know there's somebody that said she was worried that she was going to get the Cobra Corsage, Cobra Corsage because she hates snakes and she hates this fabric. Can you imagine if your all of the fabrics turned up and it was different variations of Cobra Corsage? You'd be so disappointed. So uh, yeah. Neva says, good morning, it's beautiful here in the burbs of Chicago, but I'm cleaning up my sewing area so I can cut and sew my, my daughter's McCall's 8105. Very nice. <laughs> Noelia's here, uh, good morning. Caroline's here, I have some Meadow Melody in my cart for an 8577, <laughs> but I haven't hit by yet. I like the Meadow Melody, that's pretty. Teresa says, good morning from Minneapolis. And Sal says, I love a game where you actually had to get a hole in the head. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right, let's, um, let's sew this waistband on. Actual sewing within the first, like, 30 minutes of the, of the tango. Who am I? Who are you? Who even am I? What's going on? Right. So I wanted to let the skirt on this hang before I put the waistband in because, and the bias binding at the back, because I thought that would make it easier. But I think it actually, like I say, has stretched out the waistband on the skirt, which is why I'm having to kind of fudge this together, but it's fine. I think it will be wearable by the end of it.
yeah, I just won't be so showing anyone the insides of this one. Olivia's here. Good morning from Iowa. Hello. Somebody commented on the pajama blog the other day um, saying, why didn't I just take a standard pair of trouser pattern and put the sides, take the sides together and then get the strip for the border print that way? If you do that, most, most standard trouser patterns um, are shaped at the top. So you'd, you'd, you'd end up with it attached at the side seams there. And then it would curve out like that because it's it sews together for shape so that you have shaping over your hips so that's why I went for the Tofino trousers was because they don't have that shaping and they already had the side panel built in so yes I do kind of get what you mean but I did like I did when I was talking about it in the um in the the, the 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 plans video I did say that that's why I wasn't going for a normal pair of trousers because because of that reason. Sal so says he's watching Zombieland 2 at the same time as this. I really want to watch that movie. I really want to watch it with Wilson though. So, because he hasn't seen Zombieland, so I want to get the double bill and yeah. I think he'll enjoy it. says any word on house viewing um we know that they were looking at a couple of other properties this weekend and then they were going to make a decision if they found one that they liked so we haven't heard anything as yet but who knows who knows fingers crossed everybody good thoughts please so yeah we shall see did we did um, you put any more water in the... Yes. Oh, awesome. Just thinking I should go and do that. <laughs> right, so uh, press the waistband seam up towards the waistband. Now I can put in the zip. And then we can see if this thing needs re-leveling, which I have a feeling it might. This might be one of those skirts that I get annoyed with and end up leaving for like six months like I did once before. And then when I leveled that thing, it never, it hasn't dropped since. So that is a definite possibility. Thank you. 
I ordered some um, fabric from Jellyfish Fabrics, I think. I think it was Kate that put it in the Peeps group. It was a lemon print with leaves, and then they also had just a leafy one. It's a jersey fabric. I ordered that like three weeks ago, and it's still not arrived. And it has a tracking number on it, but it says we won't have any tracking details until we've attempted to deliver this fabric. So it's kind of a bit irritating because I was going to cut some t-shirts out to do today because as you know I've got um, some t-shirts that I got from Flamingo Fabrics which came really quickly and are lovely um yeah this I wanted to do them all in one sort of go like batch sew it again and uh yeah the jellyfish fabrics has not arrived yet I'm sure it will I'm sure it's coming at least I hope it is because it's beautiful and I want it but That's better. That's much better. Right, let's turn you back around and put the zip in. There we go. <laughs> Julie's back and she says, oh wow, you've already started sewing stuff. I know. It's like unheard of, right? Um, so was, mom, mom's just getting attacked by fabric. Okay, Sal says, hope lockdown can end soon in your part of the world so you can sell and move quicker and less stressful. Yeah, I mean, technically the housing market has reopened and, and people can come and buy now, but um, they're not really doing that. This is the first viewing we've had. Well, not mind you, the, that, that restriction was only raised recently, so I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Kind of thinking maybe I should pick off. I'm going to. <laughs> I should remove this excess fabric. I should. What's happening? Where did you put that? It was with my uh, peacock stuff, waiting for doing the. Shams. Mum keeps putting things in safe places. <laughs> and we all know how that works out. <laughs> this is just what I wanted. Julie says, oh wow, you're sewing stuff. You, you already started sewing stuff. Sorry for being late to the party, but my husband is going to have the boys today. And the first one came before he was back from kayaking. Don't worry, it's fine. Nice to see you, Julie. Nimue is here. Lynn says, will we see the finished product today, Sham? Po possibly, but I, like I say, I think this is going to need, the hem's going to need re-leveling on this. So I'm going to finish the skirt to the point of having a look at the hem and then we'll see. And then I'm going to work on this one. Sarah says, hello, lovely. Bless your mum. Yes. She does this a lot. Hello. <laughs> you'd, you'd think she'd learn. No, it's but, all very neatly done. Yeah, no, you keep putting things in safe places. I know, it? it's for my peacock quill. It's saved. <laughs> Not to be used. <laughs> and I'm using it. <laughs> Bad person. I'm not saying a word. No. Okay. We'll see how this goes. I may need to unpick this. Safe places are the most dangerous places to do stuff, <laughs> Nimoy says. Yes. Laura's here as well. Hello, Laura. Yes. We found that with the light uh, box, didn't we? Yeah. It's a very sensible place to put them. Genius. You used it like so infrequently that we forgot where the lead went for it and then had to buy a new one. And then as soon as you bought the new one, you find the old one. <laughs> yep. It's like the guitar piece that Wilson bought to fix something. He was like, wow, lockdown's the perfect time to, like, you know, refurb all my guitars and fix all the things and add the mods that I want to for them. 
and he lives in a, a four by four meter studio apartment and he lost this piece. He couldn't run anywhere, so we ordered a new one. Thankfully, the old the, the, the original has still not turned up because I think that's the most annoying thing is when you yeah. when you lose something <laughs> and then the minute that the new one arrives, then you you find the original. Yeah. Trouble is, you'd even labelled the box carefully so we would find it. Yeah, and then we moved. Um, <laughs> yeah, the box got turned around. We, we, we moved around the shirt because it was stored above. It was stored in that box there because the light the light box is under the tissue paper there. So the box was in that cubby hole there. And then this all got moved around. And uh, yeah, we lost it. But never mind. Never mind. Mum now has a short lead and a long lead for her A3 light box, which is good. Face putting in six. I think, um, I think zips are kind of like get a bad reputation because they can be tricky to install, but once you've worked out a method that works for you, and there are lots of different methods, and no one is correct or incorrect. I think once you've worked out a method that works for you, it's then just one of those things that it's like, okay, yeah, we can do this. So. Let's put it in the other side. Noelia says, I'm levelling the hem of a dress. The whole make is turning into a nightmare. I'm using Lady McElroy fabric I posted in the Peeps group from Material Girl Laura, that um, Princess Kate one, I think, wasn't it? And then she says, the print is gorgeous, but it's viscose crepe and the bodice is stretched and is now bigger than the lining. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Caroline says, Hubs did that last week. Lost his computer glasses after 24 hours. I ordered another pair. Yesterday, five days later, he found them in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Joe is here. Hey, peeps. Hi, Joe. Welcome. Carol says, Good morning from New York. You keep, you'll be keeping me company while I clear up this morning. Good morning, Carol. Thank you for joining us. Michelle says, I think I'm going to work on my pattern design for the DPN needle holder. Nice. Joe says, Another hokey cokey day for me. You're very welcome, Joe. Let us know when you pop in and pop out. Julie says, let the embroidery commence. What are you doing more leaves to get today, Julie? Sarah says, I totally agree with you with zips are the tricky things in sewing than hems. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. <sighs> Trying to not get all this fabric to pull in my lap and pull everything down, but then also get it so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Fun times. <coughs> okay. Wilson is awake. What? The lad. You have to set an alarm. He's going, he's going, he's going to, no, he's going to meet one of his bands that he plays with in Regent's Park. Are they going to play? No. Oh, that'd be nice. No, they don't work for free. That's probably not allowed. 
would encourage a crowd, wouldn't yes, it? and they are maintaining a social distance from each other. Oh, that's a nice one. That's good. Yes, yeah, it's a good nice to see track. I says I have planned to sew my rainbow skirt but that's a June challenge so cutting out more small things for my goddaughter it is ah oh, pretty you can hear our neighbour from over the road is that Dave? yes that is David. Julie says, I've got four leaves and then I can finish the sewing of the skirt as well. But if it takes 10 plus hours to embroider a leaf, it will take a long time. I think we were distracting you last weekend, weren't we, Julie? That was, that was it. We were a distraction. Where's the wolf? Go outside. It's a fly, yeah, that comes like a wolf. Olivia says, how's your mum's quilt coming along? The baby goslings are finished. She is now putting borders on them to then put into the triangles to then put into the quilt. <laughs> That's right. Okay. See, I pay attention. Very good. She's just deciding on the sashing. <laughs> Oh, don't have sewn into the... You are kidding me. What have you done? Ugh, just caught the zipper teeth right at the bottom. Oh, that's annoying, and it's also the bit that's the back stitching. Fun times. Jinx myself by saying that zips are all right once you've worked out a way of doing them. <laughs> that you're happy with. I hate the zips. See, if you have that attitude, you're always going to hate the zips. Oh, yeah. Probably. It's too late to stop. <laughs> Didn't you say? No. Nope. Okay. Where did I get to in the comments? Julie says, yes, you were, and I loved it, like I do today. <laughs> I'm glad that you enjoyed the distraction, Julie. This was good. Susan says, I have hand sewn the last few zips. This makes it stable. This makes a stable cotton with a covered zip. So I'm going to machine it in. And I think I'll have a go at hemming with my as yet unused blind hem foot. Oh, good luck with that. I don't use my blind hem foot for blind hems. I use it as an edge stitch foot. I really need to get myself an edge stitch foot. It would be um, something that I, it's something that I use pretty much every project. What are you oh my God. Sorry? Would it be better than the one we've got? We haven't got an edge stitch foot. I thought that's what five was. No, that's a blind hem foot. Is it? Yeah. Oh. The needle only goes one side of the, of the guide. The, yeah. An edge stitch foot, the needle can go either side of the guide, so you don't have to, you can sew in the same direction uh -huh. of sewing, because, you know, some bias binding twists. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you have an edge stitch foot, then you can put the needle mm -hmm. to the other side and sew it in the same direction that it was sewn on, so that it shouldn't twist. So we need to invest in one. Yeah. Of course, it's the back stitching that got stuck in the teeth. <laughs> Fun times. Mm -hmm. 
That fly's not irritating at all, is it? Very busy. You could just buzz away. Is it a, or is it a bee? I think it's a bee actually. Oh, is it? If it settles down, I'll try and rescue it. To the outside. Is that a bee? No, 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 no. I don't know. I think it is. It's not fly shaped. <laughs> Just making a lot of noise. Uh, let's see. Where did I get to? Melanie is here. Hi, Melanie. Noelia says, I don't mind spit zips, especially now I've bought an invisible zipper foot. It took me, took my sewing, my, it took me sewing my finger to buy one. Now I wish I'd done it earlier. Oh, ouchie. That's not good. Linda is here. Phew, a bit hot out now. Cold drink, piece of pork pie, and your live chat. Oh, don't talk about food. I'm getting hungry. That was my stomach. <laughs> no food for Sean till six o'clock. No. Oh. That's not right. We've got tomato soup today and Dad's um, doing a barbecue. Yeah. Before later. That should be fun. Who knows what time, but that's half the fun of barbecues, isn't it? So they're kind of like mm. unpredictable. Yeah. Yes, I think that's going to work. Uh, Laura says, I'm not a dressmaker, but I love making bags and I've recently been using zipper by the meter with fancy zip pulls. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, I've used that a couple of times. I like it. Mum and dad do not like it. They had to buy some for making some friends cushion covers for her conservatory and they had a lot of um, <laughs> lot of words to say about the um, putting the pulls onto the zipper tape. They were not polite words to be repeated. No. There's one stitch that's just stuck. Um, Duvalet says, I think I'll have my lunch and then lay down for a bit on the sofa since I'm tired after two hours drive. Yeah. I think that sounds like a good idea. Oh, yay. The zipper is free. Let's remove all this thread. <laughs> Duvalet says, also, gentle reminder to like this hangout. Yes, please. That would be lovely. Oh, did everybody manage it last time? I think so. Oh, good. Yes, and... Um, Come back and comment later on the uh, the playback. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me, Dubele. Oh my goodness, my stomach is making a lot of noise. Oh, that's dull. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is um, that was my stomach. Right. How far do I need to unpick this so that I can zip it up? If I managed to twist the zip as well, oh my god, I massively jinxed myself, didn't I? I can't done. Uh, Have you? I've no idea. I don't think so. Just need to get the stitches out of the teeth with the zip. The invisible zipper foot's meant to prevent this, but um, fun times.
so Julie says thanks to Dougalo for the reminder about liking the video. Elizabeth says, what dress is on your mannequin behind you? It's the by hand London and a bodice with a gathered skirt and I'll be working on that once I, <laughs> if I get this done. <laughs> I've got the skirt twisted, that's the problem. There we go, that's better. Is it going to zip up yet? Yes, it's going to zip up, right. So I just need to re-sew that bottom bit of this zipping. Make sure I've got all this thread out of the zip. Okay, try that again. Fun times. Jennifer is here. Hello, welcome. Sal says, yeah, don't talk about food. It's also almost 10 p.m. here down under and way too late to be eating. <laughs> Olivia says, how's your dad's garden coming along? Very well. It's looking beautiful out there, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's doing a fantastic job. Yes. And my veggies are getting planted. Yes. Oh, I'm doing that. The beetroot's finally arrived. Yay! Sarah says, this is loving you and your mum in the sewing room, sewing away. It's a regular Sunday occurrence now. <laughs> uh, Linda says, oh gosh, don't mention barbecues here in the Peak District. Tourists have caused four more fires yesterday, 12 oh. in total this week. How? Oh, yeah. People are just, it's um, like Philip DeFranco says, don't be stupid, stupid. No, yeah. Um, Gin and Pen says, as it's hotter, I can tell you don't have a cardi on. Remember to drink more fluids. Yeah. <laughs> I do have my water bottle with me. The only reason I don't have a cardigan on is I was kind of hoping that the one mum's currently knitting would be finished. <laughs> Not yet. Nearly. It's nearly finished. Going all the way around with ribbing takes. That's what's taking the time. Yep. Yeah. And I'm running out of wool. You might have a black trim on the edge. Oh no. Can you not just make the ribbing shorter? Yeah, if you're happy with that. How much shorter? I think it might be about an inch. I've got bits of three balls left. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Olivia says to Michelle. Oh, hang on. Uh, Michelle says, okay, let's talk about making marking utensils. I like my marking pencils of different colours, then it's hard to get it to go away. I'm not sure about friction pens. What uh, what's are everyone else's thoughts? I really like my friction pens and I also have a chalk marker, but they are both things that you want to make sure that it will come off of the fabric uh, before you use it on your main fabric, especially with bag making, because I know you... Um, you can you you can have to draw on the outside part, parts of bags and things. So sometimes the friction pen will come away, but it'll leave a white residue. So you do want to check that first. Um, like Olivia says, Taylor's tacks, tacks and chalk. But again, if you're if you're bag making, you're not really going to use Taylor's tacks. Um, Taylor's chalk though is another one that uh, you could use. And then there's also those air erasable marker pens, but they're only good if you are not batch marking, if you your mark is you, as just before you're about to sew. But I do find that they disappear. Um, yeah, anyone else have any other? Some new ones just come out, which are being advertised. I don't know what they like. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Julie says, I think Sundays are days to find new sewing crafting YouTube. Has just started watching another new to me one this time. It's Rachel Makesy. I love her. She's awesome. I really want to go and sew with her <laughs> because I really want to. Like, she just did a, a hem on a skirt and, and she didn't like how it came out, and I really want to go and help. <laughs> But yeah, I love Rachel, Rachel's channel. There's another one that I've been watching this morning, Mariah Patty. I think that's right. Um, she's been doing these kind of um, history bounding inspired collections that she, she does in Photoshop. 
and then thinking about actually making them. But I, I, I really enjoy her channel. Um, I've watched quite a lot of her videos this morning. So yes, yeah, Sundays are the days for new, for new, um, new people. Um, Duvalo says, I use chalk, soap, and a friction pen. Yeah, soap's a good one as well. Soap, yeah. How do you use soap? You know, if you get the edge small, then it will leave a line, but it also then obviously washes off. Um, the, Melanie says, I like Rachel. She's so funny and cute, yeah. Olivia says, I love Rachel and her dog. And Stealth Cat, I love Stealth Cat. Emily says, I love Rachel. I was watching her this morning. Alex is here. Hi, Sean and Peeps and, Q and QQ. Hi. Uh, Julie says, Noelia, I thought it, I was smart making a twirl with twirl with frictions, but then realised I have to iron press the twirl and my marks would disappear, face palm. Yeah. If you're making a twirl, then just use biro. I use biro. So it, it, it doesn't come off. <laughs> Julie says, I've been using a square of Taylor's chalk lately. Caroline says to Michelle, I use friction pens, chalks, and Taylor's tacks, depending on the color of the fabric. Alex says, I like chalk. I have chalk wheels that I love and Taylor's tacks. Sa so says, Sean, since you're a Hoovian, you might like to know that I picked up the 13th, 13th Doctor's sonic screwdriver recently. I now have four. That's very cool. I still want 11th. Louise says, I use Taylor's chalk and pencil. I have, uh, Judy says, I have the prim pencil recommended by Rachel. Yeah, me too. Prim chalk, Ooh, that bit of chalk's broken. Uh, the prim chalk uh, mechanical pencil, I love this thing. And uh, yeah, totally recommended by Rachel. Um, Noelia says, Julie, that happened to me with darts once, yeah. Caroline says, I like Mariah and Bella May's designs. Yeah, Bella May is really nice as well. That's another good one. Actually, if you put in history bounding, uh, there's some really interesting channels that come up. Olivia, I watch Mariah also. Noelia saying hi to Alex. Gin and Pin says, been there, done that, Julie. I do like Taylor's tags. I have a chalk marker, but not used it yet. Sarah says, You'll be watch I will be watching you from now on. Just beautiful banter, mother and daughter together. I'm making headbands for my school friends, granddaughters, five months to five years old. Oh, lovely. Faye says, You can microwave books with friction pens to wipe it clear. Maybe you could do that with fabric. Yeah, you can. It um it does you, I, I use friction pens regularly. You just iron it and um the fabric the, the, the marker goes away. But it does sometimes come back if it gets cold, so you need to bear that in mind. And also, as I say, friction pens can leave a white residue on certain fabrics. So you need to test it on a piece of fabric before you use it on your main fabric, especially if it's in a place that will be seen on the finished garment. Ask me how I know. I think it's cold and hot, very hot, isn't it? Like in Saudi. No? Not very hot, no. 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 Extremes of temperature, but just in the cold yeah. direction. Alex says, hi, I woke up at 4 a.m., spent two hours watching videos with new machines. <laughs> Kathy's here. Good morning. I just got off work. We'll be listening on the drive home. Good morning, Kathy. Sal says, 11th is one of the four I have. Very nice. It's a good job you live that far away, so I can't nick it. <laughs> Not that I would, but you know what I mean. Um, Duvalet says, soap has longer lasting sharp edges compared to chalk in my experience. And soap is also very good for darker fabrics. Basically, I was taught to use soap from when I learned to sew. Sarah says, I, I use all that can mark my fabrics without leaving a mark. And Melanie says, it's it's interesting how history bounding, history bounding seems to have taken off lately. It is, it is. Rachel actually, I'm sure you've watched it. She did a video about um, vintage aesthetic, not vintage values, and it's totally correct. I mean, the amount of people that say, oh, you're born in the wrong era, it's like, uh, no, it's very nice to be born in this era uh, with all the freedoms and things that we have. Um, I just happen to like the aesthetic of a different era, and that's why I wear that, that style of clothing. It was a really interesting video, and it involved a lot of people from the kind of history bounding community um, of all different... Um, ethnicities and um, orientations and things like that and so many of them had so little rights um, in the era that they enjoy dressing in and it's not that they like that era or want to bring that kind of era back it's just that they enjoy 
the aesthetic of um, the clothing from that time period. And that's totally fine. You don't... What is history banding? Wearing historical type dress, but in a modern... So like an Edwardian walking skirt, but making it calf length rather than floor mm -hmm. length. Because there's, um, there's also a trend called Disney bounding. So you can um, when you go to Disney as an adult, you're not allowed to wear a costume um, because you could be mistaken for a park employee. And they obviously have very strict guidelines about how they act and interact with other, other characters and also um, the general public. But you can Disney bound, and so which is a, an outfit inspired by a costume of one of your favorite characters. Um, that you, that reads as that Sophia Nygaard did did this. Um, she went as uh, Iago, and oh no, uh, Tyler went as Iago, and she was Jafar. So like you know, red. She, I think she did a couple, but so the idea is that you you look inspired by the character without actually wearing a full on costume, and that way you can go to the park um, without getting told off or or, or be, being refused admittance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Disney bounding's a thing as well. Did you know that if you do go to Disney and you see any of the Toy Story characters, you can shout out Andy's coming and they have to fall to the floor and pretend, that to, pretend to be dead. So that, um, or pretend to be toys so that, um, yeah. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do with certain characters that they have to, there's certain responses that they have to do. It's, um, it's, it's the actual, the amount of stuff that uh, goes into being a Disney character, I do find uh, like amazing because there's, you know, so, so many things. And did you know that there is a, there's a, a Chinese acrobat that is employed to be Peter Pan, but only in the nighttime shows in front of the Magic Castle. And he gets paid something like $500 a night because they couldn't get insurance for, for that job. So he gets paid an absolute amazing amount of money for a very small part um, because they couldn't get insured. <laughs> oh, Danger money. Oh, come on, not again. I was really careful this time. Now the fabric's got caught in the zip. That's the problem. Oh, if it... There we go. I was going to say, I swear this skirt is jinxed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, let's put on the... Yeah, I think Disney bounding is kind of where the history bounding trend or, or at least the name for that trend came from as well, Julie. I think you're right. Um... Julie says, how do you know? What was that in reference to? Oh, yeah, ask me how I know. Um, Yes, because it's happened to me, Julie. Of course, it has happened to me. Those pesky, pesky, pesky pens have left white residue. That is how I know. And Karen says, I love prior attire. Yeah, you too. She's just done a video on her Instagram, which was kind of debunking Victorian myths again. And um, she's in her corset, and her husband's like, can you do press-ups in that? And she gets down and does press-ups in it. Mm -hmm. Like, Victorian clothing wasn't uncomfortable. Um, Abby Cox, that's another one. She's just released a, cha a channel. She is part of the American Duchess team. Um, her take on, on um, period clothing is really interesting. She wore, I think it was 17th. 18th century, but so it's 1700 dress for, is that the right way around? It is, isn't it? The 18th century is the 1700s. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, she wore 18th century dress for about five years exclusively, and her thoughts on it were really interesting. She was just like, I was more comfortable 
than I have been in a long time because there's so much that goes into it that's not me. So people who are like modern day clothing, you can clearly see the body shape underneath modern day clothing. And with them, um, you know, period clothing, there was lots of illusion and padding and different portions going on to, to give you the shape that you wanted. And she said, I felt so much more comfortable in it because it was just, you know, people weren't judging her on her body type what just what her body the illusion she was giving that her body type was and she also said that you know she put on something like 20 pounds over the over the period of time and her actual sizing of clothing very changed very little because it was all so adjustable and um, she also said that because it was all made in natural fibers that it was you know very breathable and they knew what they were doing about keeping cool and things like that it was a really interesting that was my little synopsis of it but it's a really interesting video highly recommend you go and have a look at that one if you're interested in that kind of thing and um yeah i find i find her channel very interesting as well she talks about interesting topics and she does make modern day clothes she's made a sew over anderson blouse which she likes <laughs> so yeah it's a that's hers is a good channel to watch as well um what else where did we get to Sal says, don't worry, he's got a good guard, guard dog, K9. This is a very good point. I'm not going to argue with K9. Uh, Julie says, I'm going to watch that soon, but right now I'm here with you guys, and that's something that I prioritise very much, which is very lovely of you, Julie. Um, Melanie says, I absolutely love that video. Very interesting, and it put into words what I've been thinking every time someone talks about being born, born in the wrong era. Yeah, the, this is the Rachel Makesy video. Emily says they're not allowed to point their, with their fingers either. They have to use their whole hand. Yeah, that's for Disney. Nicholas says last time I went to Disney, we went to Mickey's Halloween party. I Disney banded as Minnie. It was great fun. Oh, that's awesome! I've never been to Disney. I really want to go. I um, I really want some. I want some um, um, ears. I want some mini ears. Me too. We'll have to just go, Mum. At some point. Mum, mum always wanted. Mum always said that she'd take the grandchildren, and then never got grandchildren, so she's never got to go. So yeah. Um, Faye says I'm off to do some um, weeding for my ninety-eight-year-old neighbour. Have fun, Faye. That's very nice of you. Laura says I didn't know about the about that about Disney. You learn something new. Um, Craft and Bev says, I used to work for Disneyland. I was in the marching band and the other bands in the, that were in the park. And you aren't kidding about how strict they were, how how strict they are. We we had to act when we were in the park. Yeah. Um, even if you're not in costume, more in uniform, oh, you have to be absolutely on your most best behaviour or be fired on the spot. Yeah. I have heard that. I have heard that. I, lo I love reading some of the interactions that um, people have had with Disney characters and how they've stayed in um, in character. I like There was a particular one where Belle and Gaston were together and um, Gaston was having to stay in like the, the Gaston character, but there was also, there was a, a young girl there and he was just like, oh, he was trying to, be pro-feminist as well so he was just like oh you, you could end up reading and being like Belle and you know so he's still being bad but obviously highlighting the good things about the the character that he was opposite so yeah I, I, lo I love reading those those um, interactions that people have had like when Pluto met somebody's um, guide dog and how he reacted like Pluto oh it's just so cute um Julie says it was just as normal for a person to wear corsets back in the day as it was for us to wear bras. Yeah, I mean, the bras bras are actually an invention from like around about the 1920s and 1930s, and they haven't changed much since the 40s, I believe. And then, um, yeah, it was corsets, then bus bodices, then bralettes, and, then, and now into the, the, what we know as bras today. And this, you know, uh, Bernadette Banner did a really interesting um, and very well researched and informative video on corsets and myth busting you know saying that not everyone in the 18th century was as tiny as we think they were and you know they weren't all cinching down to 18 inch waists and fainting away because they couldn't breathe and moving their organs and things and she's actually had scoliosis and so she was brought up and and grew up in a medical formed corset to help her her shape and um yeah, I mean, one of the things as well about some of the reasons that some of the garments exist, that still exist today, that we get to see 
um, that they are so tiny is because they probably weren't worn very often or, you know, maybe once or twice. And then the sort of larger garments or the more everyday garments were worn so frequently that they've obviously over time disintegrated as, as would naturally happen. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, the myths or the, the ideas that we have about um, historical dress you know, like, I love, that's one of the reasons I love Prior Attire's channel, because she shows you how they went to the bathroom, she shows you how they did exercise, they showed you how to get into a car in a crinoline, uh, you know, a hoop skirt. Like, you know, they, they weren't making life difficult for themselves on purpose, and it wasn't going to take them hours to get dressed into things. She gets dressed in 20 minutes by herself, and, you know, quicker with a maid kind of thing. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it's interesting. Uh, where did we get to... Eva says, I worked at Disneyland in Florida when it was opened in 1972. Oh, wow. What what did you do? Emily says, I found Vicky Mouse on YouTube. She always shows you how she makes them every year she goes. Oh, cool. Is that the ears? <laughs> Julie says, James and Nia can still have kids. Um, Nia's 52 and doesn't want any more children, can't have any more children and has three already. And um, James can't have kids either. So I you know, have step grandchildren. You do. And I'm very pleased. Yes. And there will be great grandbabies before long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Uh, Rachel says, I always finish the Grace corset top by name and I've just have the buttons to do and I can't believe it fits you can't try it on till the end because it's all flat filled seams oh wow I do like um that top though so I'm, I'm going to be interested to see um see how that turns out Sarah says does this apply to Euro Disney in Paris I, I'm guessing the same strict rules apply there as well and um, I, I was meant to go to um Euro Disney uh, it was part of my job when I went to Long Poly and the morning that we were we were meant to go in the afternoon on the Euro Tunnel on the on the Eurostar, and that was the, in the morning that that was when the tunnel caught fire. So our yeah. trip got cancelled. So I never got to go to Euro Disney. I was I was oh. very upset. Anyway, says I went to Disney World with a male friend. Mickey wanted to kiss on the nose at the photo op and got it. And the photographer was chiding him for making my not boyfriend jealous. <laughs> Love it. So it says the modern day wired bra was created in the 1800s and had uh, had to research my Dracula novel to find out. Ah, okay, interesting. Judy says my maternal grandma was wearing a corset her entire life. The last time she had to get a new one because the one we had prior was in tatters. She had to have it specially made in the 1990s and she was kind of a big lady. I think it's one of those things if you're used to it and it's comfortable then you know, and well-made corsets to your dimensions are comfortable, believe it or not. And tight lacing and, you know, making the waist as small as possible is actually, if it, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a, a recent invention, but it's not something that they used to do um, religiously. That's not the silhouette that they were going for. There was way more padding added to the bust and the hips. And the corset was, you know, maybe a little bit of reduction, but it wasn't, that wasn't the purpose of them. It was more for support. So the, um, the, the, the illusion of the tiny, tiny waist came more from padding. And again, Bernadette's done a really good video. Is, it does my bum look big enough in this. And um, it was making a bum pad for wearing with her Edwardian skirt. And it does give an amazing shape once she's got it on. And it's, you know, that's, it's one of those things that if you're comfortable wearing it, then why not? you know you do you that's that's half the half the fun of making your own clothes and living when we do is that we can wear what we like when we like without people telling us off so yeah there's um oh the what book was i reading I can't remember. I think I think it might have been one of the Outlander ones. But back then, you know, women wearing um, trousers was actually illegal. Really? Yeah. Women dressing as men was yeah. um, not the thing. just sewing my waistband lining on I like to do a two-piece waistband rather than a waistband that's folded because um, once I've done this I'm going to understitch it and for me I just find that that sits better 
Um, but again, that's a personal preference. And I know there's lots of people who prefer folded waistbands. Neva says, I worked in the Hall of Presidents in Liberty Square wearing a Martha Washington type dress with three quarter sleeves and we had to wear stockings every day in the heat and, in that heat and humidity. Ouch. See, if they were made from natural fibres, oh. might not have been, but I bet they weren't, were they, in the 70s? Oh, I'm not chatting so much now because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to sew. Apparently, I can't do both at the same time. <laughs> I do think I'm going to um, have to re-level this hem, so I don't think this is going to get finished today, which is annoying, but never mind. to see how 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 bad it's dropped and if you if I can live with it because it's a full circle skirt so sometimes you can even if it's a if it's a tiny bit wavy you can get away with it but we'll see what have you already hemmed it I haven't hemmed it oh, no I've leveled the hem <laughs> that would be I just don't want to have to level it again but no. I think I'm gonna have to because that's the thing Shut down there, aren't they? Yeah. The acoustics of this road are really strange. If the wind's yeah. in the right way, you can hear what's going on in somebody else's garden. So you have to be careful what you say. You do. No. Kathy says her daughter works in Star Wars Galaxy Edge. Oh, that's. Ooh. I was waiting until. Um, well, I mean, not that we're gonna go this year. Um, what is Galaxy? There's a new Star Wars world in Disney. Oh, in Disney, yeah, yeah, yeah of course it's Disney. Then. Yeah. Jen and Pin says, I remember giggling hysterically when I saw my grandma's girdles. Today they would be glamorized as shapewear. They would indeed. I mean, you know, we have our modern day equivalent with Spanx, don't we? Some of it's become very fashionable. I am. Um, I, I like what Katie did uh, as an underwear brand. I've never tried one of their bras on though, because the majority of them give a much more conical shape than I would enjoy wearing. And yeah, I think there's um there's an Instagrammer called Blossoms and Buttercups, mm -hmm. and she put up a post the other day about she put on a pair of shorts and a summer top so you know it was it was they were short shorts and a summer top and she took a photo of herself and she was like I love this outfit but I'll never wear this outside of the house because the amount of catcalls and comments and you know situations that I end up in that make me feel uncomfortable it's not fair and uh, it, it's not not that it's not fair it's just that it's, she she refuses to put herself into that situation because it's just it is just uncomfortable for her and I mean she is a beautiful girl and she has a very pin-up figure and um yeah I just it was again it was interesting and there was loads of pushback from the guys that follow her and say not me I don't do that kind of thing and it's like okay but you know 
some people do and that's the problem is that you, you can't you can't go outside wearing whatever you like because so other people feel that your body is can, because you've 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 chosen to wear that thing it gives them the right to make a comment on it and it oh yeah but she i mean she looks absolutely beautiful and she's a big fan of what katie did um underwear and she wears some really interesting stuff actually the majority of it is modern but that's been tailored to fit to fit her curves and yeah she, I, I i love her channel uh, her instagram uh, feed for the different looks that she puts out but it was it was a really interesting because she put it up in her stories as well of all the comments that she was getting from men just saying well i don't do that my friends don't do that and it's like, well there are men out there that do do that yeah. and it is way more prevalent than you know so it always have been yeah I mean, hot pants area era my goodness and but it's just because yeah. you choose to wear something does not give someone else the right to comment on it i mean we've had this discussion about um people commenting on the things that i wear and uh you know like everyone's entitled to their own opinion absolutely but you don't need to share that with that person and just because you find that person attractive in what they're wearing or they have short shorts on and you want to tell them that they have short shorts on I'm sure they're aware that they put short shorts on you know you know they know what they look like they know that they've walked out of the house wearing what they have and um, yeah it was um it was interesting it was interesting And I do know it's not all men. I'm not saying that it is all men. I'm not saying that no, that's the thing. It isn't. But it was the re the response that she got from, uh, she has hundreds of thousands of followers, I think, at least 100,000. The response that she got from, from them was very defensive. So, yeah, yeah. Julie says to Sal, I'm looking forward to reading that story, hearing that audio book. Yeah, the Dracula tale, I am too. Duvalier says, I was wondering if the secret tunnels in Disney is true. I don't think they, I think that they do exist as staff has to get from point to point, from point A to point B without being seen by guests. Secret tunnels? So cool. I want to go and work at Disney. I mean, I don't, but um, yeah. Uh, Julie's boys are here, so she's going to be right back. Nicola says to Duvalier, yes, they do exist. My hubby and son did the key tour last year and they loved it. Saw the tunnels and lots more secrets. Oh, cool. Crafton Bev says there's a whole other city underneath Disney that's where everyone gets ready and that's where the security is and where the cameras are and that's what they uh, that's where they do a lot of the repairs that's very cool to know I like that makes sense yeah it's like in hospitals there's usually an underground world especially the London hospitals yes Under stitching my facing to um, the seam allowance. Melanie says, I still get catcalled walking out in jeans, everyday clothes. I thought by now it would have stopped because I'm old. <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, I actually haven't experienced that in a very long time, which has been nice. I wonder if it's because I'm getting old as well. <laughs> Probably out of white. No, even up in up in London. Oh right. And I wear I I mean as you know, I wear bright, loud, leery clothing most of the time. So I am very visible. Um but no, I haven't experienced it in quite a while. Which has been nice. But I do remember you having to walk past building sites and kind of caving in on yourself and, and preparing for it because it is just particularly building sites. Oh, yeah. I always wondered what they would like saying something and you turn around and be like, yes, all right, then I'd love to go on a date with you. Because, you know, what are they really expecting by that interaction? Uh. Nimue says, yep, yeah, did a tour including some secret tunnels in Florida. That's cool. Duble says, that's what I thought. It's the same on cruise ships. You have no idea what goes on in the areas that guests are not allowed. Yeah, the same with casinos. Like, it's all glamorous on the outside and then there's this little like back world. Tiny little back world. Craft and Bev said, I did not like being in them and in them because California is an earthquake country. Oh yeah. Uh, Nimoy says, Disney World is technically the, technically the second floor as the water table is too high to dig a basement. Oh really? 
Rachel says, I get catcalled when I'm running. It's usually lorries. It's not pleasant. Nicola says, if you have Disney Plus, there's a fascinating series called The Imagineers about Disney. It's very interesting. I do have Disney Plus and I have seen her. I have to watch it. Melanie says, they just want us to feel uncomfortable. That makes them feel big and manly. Mm. Thing. I don't I don't get dressed for anyone's pleasure except my own I love what I wear and I wear it because I want to and I like it and you know most of the time I've made it and spent time on it and um I, th I think I think that's one of the things is when you you have to think about what you're wearing to go outside of the house but yeah you know it's, it's, it's got it's 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 got to change I mean like I said I have not experienced it for a very long time even going up to London as often as I do but then I suppose I'm a sweaty mess on the on the underground so maybe you know but that yeah yeah Michelle says I think I'm gonna have to get my walking out for out for this one or one of my own machines is that for bags or quilts I can't remember Um, Guterres Services says I got caught cat called at seven and a half months pregnant all they could see was my back I turned around and had a good laugh <laughs> I think that's the thing as well maybe we're we, well I mean I was going to say maybe experiencing it less because people are standing up for them or like you know replying now because I like I said I used to just hunch in on myself and scurry past as quickly as possible and um, I, I wouldn't do that now Michelle is making bags. Uh, Duvalo says, I once had a guy friend tell me, just call them out when you get cat calls, but I think he just doesn't understand that the idea is terrifying since mm -hmm. it's usually more than one of them there. Yeah, there was um, there was a really interesting thing that uh, came out a couple of years ago now. I think it was during the Me Too movement, and it was a thread on Reddit that was um, addressed to women, and it was like, what would you do if men had a 9 p.m. curfew? And the responses were mundane and ordinary and thankfully very eye-opening to a lot of men out of there the lot of the, the comments were things like i'd go running in shorts i'd go running after 9 p.m i'd go i'd go running with my headphones in and not worry i would i'd go i'd go to the bar with my friends and not worry about getting drunk i'd you know all these things that because they are guys they get to take for granted because um, well would leave that one there because of just everything else that's going on in the world at the moment but it was it was a really interesting thread of of all these things that these women wanted to do and the guys were replying and just like wow I take this for granted and I didn't realize this was an issue and it's and it really is it's it's like you know I probably wouldn't stay quiet now um if somebody did cat call me but as you say it's a scary prospect standing up for yourself because realistically the majority of them are not going to do anything but there's always that chance that they might and there and there's always that thought that they might so yeah it's hay fever by the way mm -hmm. emily says i remember it happening near my house when i was 14 and my mum came out to them and said that i had to deal with i had to deal with her first oh that's lovely of your mum natalie says hi all hello natalie Sal says, on the topic, if uh, I as a man, if it makes you feel ladies feel uncomfortable in any way, let me know. I never want to make women feel that way. And I have a huge respect for women. And see, that's the nice thing is that you are self-aware enough that you uh, try not to do those things and then are at least open to being said to like actually, I mean, not that you've ever done anything that's made, I don't think anyone feel uncomfortable, yeah. but yeah. Alex says, I can laugh it off now. I'm going to be 43 this year any attention is a compliment if someone really annoys me I confront them and sometimes get into trouble yeah 
Emily said um, her mum taught her never to be scared to stand up for myself, which again is lovely. Caroline says, my dad was just behind me one day going past a building site and took a great delight in yelling back, I wouldn't, she's, I wouldn't, she's jailbait and flashing his warrant card. <laughs> That's lovely, but yeah, I like it. Alex says, but it's not just men who judge people by the way they dress. Oh no, totally not, totally not. But um, yeah, it tends to be, it tends to be men that feel the right and urge to comment in public via that means about uh, a way a way that people dress so yeah word I'm looking for press words are hard but that's um something that I've picked up from a, a web a, a YouTube channel this Evelyn Evan and Caitlin I, I really enjoy them they they do a lot of DIYs and um they are funny they are husband and wife team and they're very funny together but they have actual merchandise that says words are hard. Mm. They, um, they both trip over their words sometimes, but he's particularly bad at it. It's really funny. keep as much of the window out of the frame as possible. Rachel says, it's weird they take up so much interest in what women are wearing because they sure as hell don't like going clothes shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Natalie says, have you been sewing long, Sean? Also, what are you working on today? I have actually been, so I think I started sewing about 24 minutes into the stream. So probably longer than I should have should admit to, given that I've got so little done. Um, I'm gonna. I don't. I'm gonna. My my bobbin is saying it's less than eight percent left, but I'm gonna risk it because I've only got so two really small things. Let's see if this is a bad idea. Um. And I am putting a waistband onto a, a circle skirt. Uh, Nancy's laughing at Rachel. Duvalet says, I'm just happy that now I feel safe to go out to the bar with my friends and come home safely since I'm not 20. Don't look even close to what I looked like and safe to use taxi apps. Yeah. World has changed a lot, hasn't it? Emily says, my husband is every, ever honest, every honest when I'm taking him shopping with me and tells me if something looks bad. And Alex says to Rachel, I think the point is they get more interested in the less we have on hoping for shopping, hating girlfriends, perhaps. Yeah, that's one thing um, Wilson's never going to have to endure is going shopping with me, unless it's for fabric. He might, no, I'm not going to, I would never inflict that upon him. He gets so bored, bless him. 
but then he never inflicts guitar shopping on me. We walked we walked down. There's a um, a street uh, just off Tottenham Court Road that has an entire his entire street of guitar shops. And we walked past it, and he didn't make me go in. We did look in the windows. I did say he could go in if he wanted to, um, but he didn't. So. But no, I won't. I won't inflict fabric shopping on him. That'd be mean. He might want a shirt. <laughs> he wants a shirt. It's going to be black or grey. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to be able to swing him around to the um, the print side of life. No, no. If he gets a print, it'll be a check. Yeah, that'll be it. That's it. Okay. I saw a very subtle guitar print that was black, uh, grey, and red, and I showed it to him, and he was like, "What's that? Oh, it's guitars." Mm -hmm. So, um, no. Julie is back. Welcome back, Julie. Right. Is it lunchtime yet? Yeah. Thank I'm goodness for that. Press these. And then... I've got to Emily's off. got to go and do some housework. How they go into the triangles. Thank you for joining us, Emily. I think I'm going to slip stitch the lining to the inter the waistband internally. I think, I think that's the way forward for this because usually I would stitch in the ditch, but because it's such a lightweight fabric, I think I'm going to. Slip stitch it into place. So I've got my fend. Now I just need to close up the back seam and then have a look at this hem and see what I need to do with the hem. I think I'm going to pin the waistband into place as well. says he has peacock feathers I think having ice cream right now or food, mm, food. Uh, Sal says if I saw a woman with a quantum mechanics book or a sonic screwdriver that would interest me more than in more into her than what she was wearing <laughs> yeah there's um there's, you know how um, guys buy girls drinks in bars um, somebody, somebody was like why don't they do that in um, bookshops someone bought me a book in a bookshop I'd be way more likely to talk to them yeah I think that's going to work 
Dubalu says, yes, Sean, the world has changed a lot in the last 15 years. In the honour of this hot summery day, I'll go and raid my freezer for some ice cream. Hmm, um, and she says to Julie, yeah, I'm not alone right now because Julie's got ice cream too. Sarah says, how is your skirt doing now? Went off to overlock. I'm just pinning in the waistband lining so I can slip stitch it later. And then I need to close up the back seam and um, then have a look at the hem and see what that's done whilst it's been sitting on the dress form. See if it's gotten a bit more wavy. They're still going down there. Someone's still chatting. Yeah. Excellent. Do you want the light to turn around while I? Yes, please. Thank you. It's not quite so dull now. <laughs> Skirt lining, well, skirt waistband lining is pinned into place. Now to try and hem or sew up the back seam. I think I'm going to need to help, not pin my, prick myself with the pins for a start, but I'm going to need to put in a new waistband, uh, not waistband. <sighs> Words are hard. New bobbin. Yeah. Let's see what their idea of 8% looks like. Oh, yeah, I don't think I'd have, so I might have got the seam out of it. But it was fairly well gone. So let's rethread that. Jubilo says to Sal, believe me, quantum mechanic books are not fun to traipse around with. I can imagine they're quite dense, as in heavy. Not something that I have ever thought about reading, because I very much doubt I would understand even the introduction from the author. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> oh dear. Uh. <laughs> oh, bugger. That's what I was trying to aim for. It's nearly finished. really well today am I <laughs> Rachel Lynn is here good morning Alison says hello Sean I'm here I have been sewing the gable top and if I have had a fiddly job matching stripes all the new banana played up it would have helped if I'd gotten it on the right tension uh Ruth Ann says good morning everyone hello Ruth Ann Julie says on your sick oh you're a secret blonde me too Patricia Lynch is laughing at me <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I love this machine, honestly. Right. Okay. It's going to be food time soon. That's going to help. <laughs> Nimoy says biology has the heaviest books. Take it from someone who has to shelf them on a regular shelf them on a regular basis. It's the top shelf, of course. Of course it is. Oh, Patricia says as a fellow 830 owner with you, not at you. No, Patricia, it's fine. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, I do. I love this machine. I really do. I I wouldn't I wouldn't have another one. Um, but it does have its little quirks, isn't it? Right, yes, so for the right over to the side, please. Thank you very much. Let's have my bobbin thread. Okay, now I have the interesting task of pinning this back soon because I have been lazy and I have not. Oh, there it is. Right. So okay. I can do this. This is fine. I can do this. Anna's here. Hello Anna. Sal says I just got a book of 36 piece work of HP Lovecraft with over 800 pages. It's heavy to carry around. Yeah, that would be the kind of book that you want to get on um on your Kindle or something, wouldn't it? Or that, at least for me, that would be the kind of book that I'd want on my Kindle. really probably should have just evened this out. Sheer laziness. Claire is here. Hello Claire, how are you my lovely? Julie says, I mostly read at night in bed, so I don't carry around books too often. Sal says, I love the feel and smell of books, prefer it in hand. Yeah, me too, unless it's an 800 page beast that I have to carry around. Like, I, I much prefer actual books, but I did buy myself a Kindle to go on holiday with because I wanted to take the entire Temeraire series to read again and uh, some other books. And so I, I think my uh, the first time we went to Croatia was for 10 days and I read something like eight books in that time. I just didn't want to have to carry that in my suitcase because I needed to take clothes. That was way more important to use my luggage allowance on. Trying not to get this back seam twisted. Judy says, please don't say bad about 8.30, Things mine is due next month. I've had this for seven years now and I love it. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I, it has its quirks, as, as, as I'm sure every machine does. But I would not have another one for sure. Not that I've used any other one, so I wouldn't have a comparison anyway. But I love mine definitely one of the best things and most expensive things I've ever bought. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Let's try and hem this bad boy. Let's see then, uh, not hem, stitch this bad boy and then, then see if I need to work on the hem some more. Or if I can hand, I'm going to hand stitch the lining in with you guys because that sounds like something that I can do and talk to you at the same time.
put my walking foot down. It's going to help. Uh, Julie says, sell me too. Claire says, oh, good, thanks. Just cold. It's pouring with rain here. Oh, no. Duvalet says, the history of British and American literature is two separate books printed on thin baking star paper and it's eight to 900 pages. You have to carry it to everyday class, of course. Ah. Alison says, do you still have your little singer sewing machine? No, I donated that to the local charity shop years ago now. Sal says, it took, I took it with me to my kid's house for the last night for the night last night. So had that, my bag of clothes, my 17 inch laptop bag, my sleep machine bag on public transport. Oh, wow. Caroline says, I love books. Just been gifted a 1924 edition of Needlework for Student Teachers. Oh, wow. I do very much enjoy books and I have an entire, as you have guys have seen pretty much daily, I have an entire um, bookcase full of them. Um, and if I had room, I'd have more. But I do like the modern convenience of Kindles and audiobooks uh, because of the work I do. Um, and like I mentioned as well, going on holiday. I... Um, I wouldn't read as much or get through as many books as I do without audi audi audible that's for sure oh, I finished Spin the Dawn I enjoyed it it was good it is it is a young young adult fiction so you know it is it is a slightly it's written Percy Jackson style I enjoy those kind of books though um, and the second one's coming out soon so I pre-ordered it so thank you very much to the person that recommended that to me I did enjoy it Judy says I discovered that if the optical lens on the sewing machine the 770 gets fluff in it then the automatic buttonhole length doesn't work I went through every option before I tried the obvious. Yeah, the, the sensors on these things are finickety. They are something that you do need to um, keep an eye on, that's for sure. Toast too. <laughs> Marmite's falling through the hole in the bread. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you want um? No, no, it's fine. I've got tissues right. here. Do you want the door shut? Or? Uh, yes, if you're going to watch the TV. Okay. Come on. Then. Yeah, make sure the dog's on the right side of it. Sylvie does not enjoy being locked in here. Mmm. Julie says, you've seen how many books I have in the living room. And that's just about half. Yes, I have. And um, yeah, as I say, if I have more room, I'd, I, when I'm in the lottery, because it's going to happen, I need to remember to buy a ticket. I'm totally buying a giant house and it's going to have a library in it. And it's going to be so much fun to fill. Claire says, I've actually made two tops this week. A lengthened toaster for my daughter and a square neck tea for me. Oh, nice. Anessa is here. Hello. Hi, Anessa. And Julie says, did you go for a walk today, Shine? No, I came. Um, Mum won't go out on a Sunday before 11 because she listens to the Archers. And I came down at about 10 past a quarter past 11. Um, I meant to come down earlier, but I'd gotten caught up watching Mariah's videos. <laughs> so, no, we didn't go for a walk this morning.
Okay. Sorry, I just had a text message. This is so yummy. Mum's gotten really good at the sourdough bread. Julia says, does anyone keep a maker's journal? I have this maker's workbook and it's great actually recording what I've sewn. I've not filled in my stash section yet. So I'm too busy sewing. I am... Um, I've got, I just bought myself a traveler's notebook cover and I've got the stuff to go in it. And um, I want to do like a maker's notebook, but then the way I, I like to have my, I like to have mine gridded and the thought of having to draw out that grid all the time fills me with dread. So I was then gonna um, print it out and bind my own. Um, but I was just wondering if anyone had any recommendations for A5 style, um, sewing sewing planners because I've got a couple of A4 ones but I would like a, an A5 one that I can I can bind and use in my traveler's notebook and Julie says a beauty in the beast style library yes exactly like that Julie because I'm going to win all the money, so I'm going to have a giant house. And Caroline says, we have bookshe uh, bookshelves in every room of the house. A library is my total dream. Yeah, that would be nice. Sal says, I want a first edition H.G. Wells War of the Worlds at 1897 because between thousand to five thousand dollars. That's a lot. Um, and everyone's saying hello to Anessa. Laurie says, I built shelves about 10 inches from the ceiling in my hallway for my paperbacks. I love my books. I really like that as a as a storage method for books as well, Laurie. Craft in Bev says, I have about 300 paperbacks and will not get rid of them. They are all in boxes until I can find bookshelves to fit them. And I live in a very small apartment. Yeah. Julie says, use gridded paper in your printer. I do, I, I already have gridded paper. I already have um, a template for the chart I want. I just need to bind it into a book. I just wondered if there was any pretty, pretty versions out there. Anessa says that she's okay, best as she can, as I can hope, I think. <laughs> Duble says, I have 20 books by my bed at the moment and want more. The only thing stopping me from buying more books is the idea of carrying them when I move. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I listened to the Percy Jackson series on Audible. I didn't have the books, but I loved it so much that I went and bought the paperback series. So I have the books. I've never read them as paperback. I've listened to the books multiple times, but I've never read them. But I loved it so much that I wanted them. And it's the same with the Green Rider series. I have them all on um, my Kindle and I have them all as paper books as well. And Harry Potter. And there's quite a few series that I've done that with. I've bought I've bought the book because I love the Audible book. And Judy says it has a printable grid. So the fold line do a downloadable one. I need to look into the ones that I've been gifted because I'm sure By Hand London gifted me theirs as well. Just, I wonder, I, what, I just wonder, I want it to be on A5, like I said. Anna says, both my son and I adore books. We kind of have a library in the making. However, mine are all in boxes still due to the Renos. An actual li library would be awesome. <coughs> yes, definitely. Noelia says, I'm okay, Nessa, thanks. Just having my lunch, hope you're well too. Norma's here, hi, Sean. Just got up, not feeling too good. This will be a great distraction for me. Oh, Norma, I'm sorry, but yes, welcome. And come hang out with us. We'll take your mind off of it. 
Nimoy says, I do have two bookshelves stacked in two rows. Need to ban some of them to the basement to make room for better sewing pattern storage. I get my fill of dusty old books smell at work. This is, yeah, you work in a library, so, you know, I think you get the library library feel all the time, don't you? Sal says, not only do I love reading stories, I love writing them as well, as you peeps know. I've written over 25 short stories, plus working on that Dracula novel. Very cool. Julie says, our bookshelf in the living room is the same that the one is the same as the one I had in my childhood room. I kind of want to get ones that are more grown up. Trouble is that one we have is practical and it fit, fits a ton of books. Julie's here. Hi, I started sewing and watching you all the lovely things today. Awesome. Hello, Julie. Uh, sorry, Julia. Laurie says, I'm so glad I'm not the only person who buys multiple versions of the same book. No, I mean, no, <laughs> no. I actually have um, different covers for the Harry Potter books that I've got. I've got some of the, the um, uh, they're the more adult looking ones, on, but I've got this, the set that I've got is half and half. So I, I actually kind of want to buy a brand new set just so that I have the same covers on it. It's not weird, is it? Is it? Tell me it's not weird. Ooh. Deb says, afternoon, here finally, though, I need a nana nap after that dinner. <laughs> Julie says, scale down the A4 prints. Yes, the, I'm not a computer genius. The trouble is I need to scale it down, turn it so that I can print it so that it's both sides and then double-sided, because, I, like I said, I want to bind it into a book to then use in my traveller's notebook. Mm. I want more toast. Mm. Vanessa says, my son turns 19 in six days and he's asked for boards and brackets to cover his new bedroom walls with bookshelves. Oh, that's lovely. Alex says, I love paper books and like Sal, I do love first editions and immediately Googled the world of the world, War of the Worlds first edition. Nice. Alex, Sal says, Alex, if you get it, I'll fly over there and borrow it. <laughs> Julie says, we have the Lord of the Rings in both Danish and English. And Laurie says, I'm not weird. Thank you, Laurie. <sighs> Alex says, Sal, I was just checking if it's cheaper here. It's almost 1,400 pounds, maybe not just yet. Noelia says, it's not weird. My son's last Harry Potter book has a different cover to the others and it really bothers me. They knew what they were doing, didn't they? Laurie says, sourdough bread is addictive. You are not wrong, Laurie. Dublay says, the problem for me is that they, they'll usually read the book once and very, very occasionally will read it again. Only a couple of my books were read twice or more. See, I've got series that I've listened to I, countless times and the Harry Potter books I've read countless times. My Georgette Hare books I've read countless times. Um, I, think, I think that's why I didn't enjoy the book club as much is because I have a very specific taste when it comes to books, which tends to be young adult fiction, uh, Regency, light fluffy Regency romances, and then some quite heavy duty sci-fi space operas. And the, the book club were just making me read books that I just didn't enjoy constantly. And it became a chore to, to then read. And after that, I stopped really kind of picking up books to read, as I say. So I um, I listen to books more often. I, haven't, I can't remember the last time I actually read a book, except for the last time I was on holiday in Croatia. And I read... I went through, I think I about, went through about seven, six, six or seven books on my last holiday. Um, 
but yeah, my, my evenings and days are spent doing such close concentration work and then obviously computer work that I find reading, I don't find it relaxing, but I love listening to audiobooks and I'll listen to audiobooks whilst like looking through Pinterest or f- fabric shops or things like that. So yeah. I do read I do read the things that I like more than once, definitely. And I think it's because it's so rare that I find a story that I love that I enjoy it so much that I want to reread it. And I always find new things in them when I reread reread them. And it's always interesting rereading something um that has a twist at the end and trying to work out where the twist is first kind of hinted or alluded to when you know what's coming. I, I enjoy that. So I yeah. But then I'll, I'll watch movies multiple times as well. Um, Shona is here. Hello. Good afternoon. Caroline says, I agree. I have many collections in all three formats, talking of which another Audible set to try is Carola Dunn's Daisy Daryl Maple series. It would be great if Audible would let people gift the first of a series to friends. Um, I hate when they char- they change the covers. <laughs> yeah, Caroline, you're going to have to email me that um, that book recommendation as well because I'll never find it in the chat again. Anna says, when you read hard copy books as opposed to audio, do you hear the reader from the audio? I tend to hear the, the voice of the person reading the book they have written if I know what that voice is like. Um, yeah, yeah. Now when I read Harry Potter, it's always in Stephen Fry in my head. Yeah, definitely. I really enjoy Neil Gaiman's um, audiobooks because he reads them, which I which I really like. Rachel Lynn says, "Have you read the new Brandon Sanderson book, Skyward?" Oh no, I haven't. But I had did listen to the beginning chapter of that from the Mistborn series. I want to get that one. That's next on my list. I've just started the Rick Riordan Apollo series because I have listened to the first one, but I haven't listened to the entire set. And then there's also the Norse gods as well, um, which I'm working up to because I've got the first one of that. So, yeah, I enjoy the, I enjoy Rick Riordan because it's, again, it's young adult fiction. So it's written in a, in a manner that I enjoy. I'm clearly very immature. Um, but I also enjoy it because it's about mythology and I absolutely adore mythology. Alex says to Sal, I only have a few, very few first editions and they're all ex libraries is that a word? So I find them everywhere. I have good whiskey aplenty though, worth flying over for. Nimoy says, I want another Harry Potter edition as well. Four paperback, three hard- hardcover bugs me, same as me. Mind you, it's my, it'd be my third. I have them all in German as well. Just normal as buying all the colorways of a print. Yeah, I really want the kind of like hardback, I think they do it in a chest. Um, I really want that. That would be good. Craft and Bev says, I'm the same way. I have very odd taste in books and movies. There's not a book that I own that I haven't read at least three times, especially my Terry Brooks books. Yeah, I like Terry Brooks as well. Julie says to Duvalet, yep, ours too. I, I can't bear getting rid of them. <laughs> Alex says, uh, Sal says to Alex, nice, I'll be right over. Laurie says, I've read The Wheel of Time. Yeah, the Bell Gar- Garadia, the Pern series and the Dune series. Okay, I've read a bunch of my books multiple times. Yeah, the Dune series is another one that I love. And Pern and The Wheel of Time. I've not read the other one though, Laurie. I have to look into that. Duvalo says, at the moment, I love finding new authors and books that are not published yet. Oh, nice. Hmm. Julie says audiobooks is also great when sewing and wanting to stay in that bubble. Yeah. Definitely. Caroline says, can't remember how often I have watched Avengers Endgame. Yeah, me, me too. Um, for me, I think my most watched Marvel is Thor Ragnarok. That is the funniest film ever. I love it. Um, 
Anna says to Julie, they're a reason why we do. Funny, isn't it? And uh, Caroline says, I read The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings at least once a year. A friend of mine, Dad, taught me that and was then in Peter Jackson films. Oh, cool. I've never read Lord of the Rings. Don't come at me. I tried and it was it was all the, the preamble before the book even started. Like the, I can't, I can't, I don't know what version I'd got, but I just, I couldn't get into it. I love the films though and I love the story. And conversely, I think it's one of the only sets of books that my brother has read multiple times. He's not a big reader. Julie says, and then the thing you made will always remind you of the nice time you had while listening to that audiobook and making the thing. Yes. Laurie says, I don't have the Stephen Fry version of Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, no, you've got the Americans have a different author, a different narrator reading it, don't they? I remember watching the American version of, I think it was called The Sorcerer's Stone, isn't it, rather than The Philosopher's Stone, and there's a couple of scenes in there that aren't in the English one, and it was like, what is going on? I have not seen this before. Uh, Ruth Ann says, I usually borrow books from the library so I can spend more on fabric. Mm. I have to say, my, my book consumption has gone down a lot since I've been buying fabric, and I do have my monthly Audible eight pounds so that's just, that's what I spend on books I wouldn't stop that ever Julie says to Anna okay that's really interesting Sal says when I finally get published I'll be designing my own cover art because I'm an artist as well won't be happy with someone else's art on my book yeah I can imagine Anna says to Julie that's so true about associating happy things when we make things it's very true yes Natalie says, I'm reading The Stand by Stephen King at the minute, but was chatting to my mum about reading that she never liked and because it's, she doesn't think in pictures. I was baffled. Oh, that's interesting. Have you read the Dark Tower series by Stephen King? I don't like Stephen King generally as an author. I don't enjoy that kind of book, but the Dark Tower series is amazing. Read that on holiday in Egypt with Natasha. Not all of it, but about three. I got through about three books. Alison says, believe it or not, I've never read a Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings books, nor have I seen the movies. It's just something I'm not into. Totally fine. It's weird, isn't it, how some people, it like uh, there's an entire generation that's obsessed with Harry Potter, grew up with it. Rachel Lynn says, my daughter and I are reading through the Rick Riordan books. You might enjoy the Pegasus series by Catherine O'Hearn. It deals with Roman mythology. Oh, cool. What Rick Riordan book are you up to? Have you also done the Egypt, Egyptian um, trilogy? I really enjoyed that as well. Uh, Caroline says, love the Tower and the Hive series, also by Anne McCaffrey. Yes, I love that one too. Uh, she had the ability, um, the Rowan, didn't she? She had the ability to change to um, uh, like change her body chemistry so that she got a, 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 a all over even tan in seconds. I want that ability. Christine Owen says, hi everyone. I'm just reading the Bell Gary ad for the millionth time. Okay, you're gonna, somebody's gonna need to send me some details about this because I think I'm gonna like it. Rachel Lynn says, the Bell Gary ad series is awesome. They're my comfort series. I go back to them whether I'm sick or having a bad day. They're by David Eddings. Yeah, someone's going to need to text me this. Anna says to Julie, then sometimes when things go wrong, we do not always want to remember them. It's ha ha. Yes, there's that too. Caroline says, yay, Thor Ragnarok. My favourite. Duvalet says, I love when books make me laugh till I cry. Yes. Oh, um... One that the book club did recommend that was good was The Rosie Project. I can't remember by who it's by, but if you if you like Audible, listen to it on Audible because it's, I think it's done by the, the um, I think it's read by the author, but The Rosie Project was so funny, like laugh out loud funny. Um, Laurie says the Belgariad series is a series by David Eddings. It's cute. Crofton Bev says, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings books are really intense books to read. I think that they're the only books I've read twice. Oh, wow. 
Joanne says, I'm exactly the same with Lord of the Rings and Hobbit. Couldn't get past the first page, but my brother has read them till the book's falling apart. Yeah, same as James as well. Julie says, I've not read Lord of the Rings, but I've listened to it, I think. Jen and Pin says, I love Lord of the Rings, but skip the poems and songs. Claire says, I used to be a voracious reader till I started quilting. I have every Agatha Christie book, including a copy of the one that I had to change the title of, as it was very racially non-acceptable now. Alex says, no, Stephen Fry and Harry Potter. I've always assumed he read them in all languages. Yeah, no, not in the American, not in the American version. Um, Caroline says the American versions are Jim Dale, who was in a lot of the Carry On films. <laughs> Nimoy says that Tolkien was paid by the word for Lord of the Rings and they weren't allowed to edit him. It shows. I love the story and world building, but boy, he's wordy and ex his exposition is ridiculous. <laughs> Vanessa says, I collect most of our books from secondhand stores and go wrong for and go wrong for one to, and one or two dollars. Yeah, Natasha, my best friend, does the same. If we, we ever pass a secondhand book sale, especially on the um, South Bank in London, then um, she goes, oh, you can't pry her away. Do you believe this, Alex? You make me laugh. Sal says, I've memories of One Ring verses both in English and Black Speech. Uh, Noelia says, Alex, I bet Stephen Fry could read them in all languages. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Quite possibly. H. So says, I love the Dark Tower and I want to make a gunslinger costume one day. That would be very cool. Olivia says, I'm an Ag Agatha Christie fan. I've read them all and listened to them all. Caroline says, my son is severely dyslexic, but learned to read so he could read Harry Potter. I will be forever grateful to JK. Rolling, yeah. She really, yeah. Julia says, have you listened to the Joe Abercrombie's audiobooks of the first Law series? Stephen Pacey is one of the best readers ever. I haven't. You guys are gonna have to put, like we'll have to start a thread in the um, peeps group for um, book recommendations. Natalie says, I've heard that, but the Dark Man in the Dark Tower series is in the stand. Ah, okay. Cool, to, uh, Claire says, I haven't read Lord of the Rings Hobbit either. I don't like sci-fi, fantasy or romance. Noelia says, could people write books, recommendations in the comments? That way we can all refer to them and you can get extra comments. Ah, yes. Please do come back at the, when the live stream is, is, is up for a rerun and leave your book recommendations in the comments. That would be amazing. That would be really, really cool. And don't forget to like your video. <laughs> um, Anna says, did you read all the Hunger Games books and Fifth Wave, my son asked. I've read, I read the Hunger Games books in three days in Lanzarote and I'd only taken those three books. So I hadn't got anything to read by the end of the last four days of my holiday. I haven't read the Fifth Wave though. Uh, Shane says, I love the Robin Hobb trilogies. They're all intertwined. Yeah, me too. Me too. I didn't like the Forest Mage series that she wrote, though. There was a standalone series. I didn't like that one. But I do love, um, I think the, the Live Ships trilogy is my favourite out of all of them. But yes, highly love that one. Noelia says, I have a friend who is so obsessed with about Lord of the Rings books, he's learned to speak their languages. Wow, that is that is a, wow. Deb says, I'm reading the Dawn Porter one that's um, Tamlin mentioned in her vlog the other day, it's so good. Anna says, I searched thrift stores for books, amazing what you can find in them, yep. Sorry, hay fever is um, an absolute nightmare this weekend. Oh, itchy does. Um, Laurie says, I read The Stand in College in the 80s. I love that book. I was in a Stephen King phase. 
Yeah, I love the Lord of the Ring book, but don't hate me, not the film. That's from Alex. Jenny Pin says, I love physical books. Since my holiday to Corfu has been cancelled, hooray. I'm going to read The Golden Thread and Threads of Life and a few, Agatha, and a few Agatha Christie's. Nice. Rachel Lynn says, we just started. So we're on the third Percy Jackson book. We're waiting for the library. Ah, cool. I love the Percy Jackson books. I think they're brilliant. I love Greek mythology. I just like mythology, Greek, Norse, Egyptian, Roman. I don't think I've ever got into any mythology from any other countries outside of that area though. Caroline says, my son loves Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan books and at school he was told he was abnormal because boys don't read. Oh God. Anna says, my son says awesome and thank you. Thank you, Teenage Earthling. Claire says, I've just finished the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. Decided which to start now out of Armistice, The Pearl Thief or biographies of Elton John or Billy Connolly. I'd go for Billy Connolly, but just because I find him hilarious. Julie says, the only King books I've ever read fully is Shawshank Redemption. I then started on The People, but I had to stop as it became too scary. Not blood and gore, but psychologically. Mm. I think we've had this conversation, haven't we? Like, I can cope with sci-fi fantasy um, violence, but not like actual violence. And I know both are the same things, but I like the, I like the separation that the sci-fi element gives me. Um, if you like, if you like, um, the uh, Dark Tower series, Julie, is not like any other Stephen King book at all. I think there's seven or eight in the series. And it's, it is quite graphic and gory in a way, but it's not psychologically scary at all. But it is just one of my all time favourite series of books. Sal says, if you like reading short stories, then I recommend Harlan Ellison. He published 1,700 short stories. That's prolific. Green Hat says, has anyone read Sabriel by Garth Nix? I remember loving it as a teenager, and this has reminded me of it. Brilliant, brilliant fantasy series, although I can't remember the details. Must try and get a copy. I've never heard of it. So, uh, yeah, let us know if you find a copy. Duvalet says, it says, Duvalet says, since I don't fancy, they can't see you. Hang on. He's been gardening. <laughs> He's a mess. He was wearing the um, he was wearing the the dragonfly shirt earlier. Oh, I get in terms of coverage. Yeah, because <laughs> it it throws the lighting off. Oh, he's looking all hurt and hard done by. Oh, the chin's going and everything. <laughs> I'll have to come in and annoy you. Uh. <laughs> what was I saying? I can't remember. Uh, Jubilee says, since I don't fancy reading about mythology, I always listen to podcasts on it. This way I have my hands free so for some mundane tasks while my mind is occupied with the podcast author. Nice. Julie says, you should listen to Eric and the Gods, all about Norse mythology. Anna says, my son was mocked in school for reading. He had books with him all the time. I think it helps children with learning and their imaginations and so much more. Totally, I can't understand. Um, I can't understand people that mock people for reading. I just, no. Cecilia says, green hat. I always love when I forget most of the plot from a book so I can be delighted by reading it anew again. Yeah. 
I'd love to have a reset button in my brain where you could erase the book, but remember the knowledge that you loved it so that you could reread it again um, fresh, but knowing that knowing that this is something that you've recommended to yourself. I would love that ability. That would be good. Uh, Caroline says, I love mythology too. My copy, copy of the Oxford Classical Dictionary is falling apart. Caroline says, my daughter is very fond of Gabrielle. Rachel Lynn says, I remember the ones by Garth Nix. Those are wonderful. Jen and Pin says, I can, rec 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 I can recommend the Welsh Mabino <laughs> Had to check how to sell it. The owl service was based on one of the tales. Oh, cool. And we're saying hello to Papa. Green Hat says it's on Amazon. There are five books. I remember her wandering around mysterious library. Then a man who had been transformed into the masthead of a ship. It was making it was better than I make it sounds. A cat Claire says I love to read murder mystery, psychological murder, and love Tara Moss. I watch all of the real crime stuff on YouTube. Michelle says, well, it's done, but the binding is the worst I've ever done. Oh no. Green Hat says, I want to press the raise button on Hitchhiker. The jokes aren't as funny the second time around. Yeah, agreed on that one as well. Here he is. He's actually so being dismissed. No, not at all. Ah. They're all saying hello to you. Hello. I've just uh, unveiled the beast. The beast? Oh, the barbecue. Oh, uh, yeah. And? Is that what you've been cleaning? Is that why you're not No, there? I've been planting tomatoes and um, I was uh, cake daisies and... Uh, all that kind of stuff. I've been moving a ton of yes manure. Yes, manure. You can't manure. smell it on you. Yes, that's good. Yes. No, don't get any closer. No, no. Anyway, Take I just place. fired up the beast and first time. Oh yay! How about we're, we're that ha then? We're having a barbecue. So you will eat this afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to do something with a bit of bacon, some caramelised onion sausages, oh. some great lamb chops, oh. chicken thighs, because they're much better than um, chicken breasts and things. And then uh, I've, already all, I've already done the potatoes. You're and already then we... cooking for three people, remember? Yeah, I know, but we can eat for three days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we're going to live on the aroma today. Uh huh. I'm going to leave the yeah. window open. I was just yeah, going to yeah, shut it because yeah, we're getting a bit yeah, cold. Yeah. Which is going to be brilliant. And then, um, yeah, all of it totally slimming. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> what? What now? How many? Uh, 102 at the moment. Ooh. Are you going to the kitchen? Yes. Domes you. Domestic services still supplied. Do you want me to wash it up as well? No, there's a dishwasher for that. Well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, where did I get to? Oh, yeah, I want to be able to reread the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That would be awesome. Um, <laughs> Julie says, just a gentle reminder to like this video. Thank you. Uh, Alison says to Claire, Tara Moss has a YouTube channel. She sews clothes. Very cool. Claire says, at, my, at school, my English teacher said he always knew my essays as someone died in the first sentence. <laughs> Ruth Ann says, if you like mythology, I can re recommend Circe and the Song of Achilles, both by Madeleine Miller. Uh, Circe and the Song of Achilles. They're great audiobooks. Awesome. Thank you. Alex says, if you like The Witcher, it has sla Slavic mythology elements. Yes, I have got The Witcher that I've been listening to, but I started listening to it on a journey up to see Wilson. And I couldn't really hear it very well over the noise of the tube and the trains and stuff. So I need to start that again. <laughs> Alex said hello gorgeous to my dad don't don't encourage him <laughs> Julie says the first book I ever read was fully fully was the experiment by Dean Coons 
Alex says, hey, Danny, hope the gardening is going well. Are we doing a barbecue this evening? So Lulu Bell says, my son would get told off for his teacher for reading in lessons. If he was not interested in the lesson, he was get to get his book out of his bag. I love that. <laughs> Everyone say hello to Papa. Duvalo says to Alex, I still need to read The Witcher. I want to see what kind of mythology is in there. Uh, Michelle says, I'm currently reading We Must Be Brave by Frances Lyadet, The Light Over London and Julie, by Julie Kelly. Christine says, Lords of the Underworld are good but a bit naughty based on the sins from Pandora's box inhabiting people. Okay, interesting. Claire says to Alison, yes, I know I watched them when they first came out and she has a lovely property here. Rachel Lynn says, if dad's making her hungry. <laughs> Natalie says I love how he stopped himself from swearing and called it manure instead yes <laughs> uh, Jojo is here hello my lovely how are you uh, right hand sewing let's um, get this lining slip stitched into place and then I can have a look at um the hem and decide if I need to level it again. Really hope I don't. This is one of those projects that's kind of fought me the entire way. So if it becomes too much harder, it's going to just get put in the recycling bin. <laughs> oh dear. Anyone else have projects like that that really bug them? I was going to say something else then, but I thought if dad's behaving himself, I probably ought to as well. Claire says that Ben has just bought a rotisserie for her barbecue so he can, I can twirl chickens. That sounds like awesome fun. Green Hat says, yes, they live in the box of shame. Um, what was that in reference to, Green Hat? All gone quiet again while I try and slip stitch this fabric. To pin that into place that will make it easier really haven't made life self life easy for myself with this skirt my stomach is still rumbling that's not good uh green hat says the they're in the box of shame the half finished projects that fight me yeah this one may well end up in that oh come on <sighs> I'm procrastinating doing that bewitch dress because I'm going to have to sort out the back neckline and I don't wanna I mean also because I know it's not really going to fit me very well because it's a little bit tight for me at the moment try to cancel my um, Weight Watchers um membership yesterday and I had to do it via chat with a lady and she I, I I just I was like please please can I cancel my membership and she was just like she was trying to be helpful and they clearly have a script that they have to work from but she asked me like five times if she could help me and go through things with me and she's like dude seriously I just want to cancel it because I don't think it's working for me it's not the right um not the right kind of fit for me at the moment um but I stupidly signed up for a six month. Not that it was any cheaper doing it that way. It's still costing me 14 pounds a month. Um, so I can't cancel until July anyway. 
so I've switched over to the purple brand and I'm going to try that because we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the lady that was um, trying to deal with me when I was trying to cancel was just, she was just irritating me because she just kept going on and on about, let me try and go through this with you because you know, it, you know, you might not be using it right. And it's like, I'm not an idiot. So uh, yeah, that was fun. Where did I get up to anyway? Sal so says, I love the sim, sim <laughs> I can't read that word, but I know which one you mean by Tolkien. Basically describes how his world was created and the events of the first few ages of that world. Um, Julie says it's a tough read and I've tr she's tried it once. Natalie says anyone who likes Norse mythology, I highly recommend Najal, Sa Najal Saga. Hmm. Julie says water. Yes, I ought to drink some water. So I says indeed to Julie, but not a smooth read. Jojo says all good here. Queen Peep, just catching up with you while reading my new HP knitting book. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I saw that. What's, your, what's going to be your first make from that? I saw that you got the book with the heart and cardigan in it as well. You got another one as well. You got a couple. Noelia says, yes, the dress I was talking about is getting on my nerves. I'm washing it to see if I can shrink it slightly. At this point, I don't care what happens to it. Oh, no. Judy says, off to the garden. Bye, bye, uh, bye, bye, peeps. Bye, Judy. Thank you for hanging out with us. I'm not paying attention to this. My stitches are getting sloppy. Maybe hand sewing whilst trying to do this is not the best of ideas. Shall not be defeated, though. It's like that bloody dart on that Vogue bodice. I shan't be defeated by that either. Caroline says, I've just agreed with my daughter that I will buy Ravenclaw fabric and marble fabric for making face masks. Awesome. Noelia says, your issue with cancelling Weight Watchers reminds me of the episode when Ross tries to cancel his gym membership. I want to quit the gym. <laughs> yeah. Alison asks how she is today. She's very good. She didn't wake me up once last night. I had a full night's sleep, which was lovely. Claire says, I've sent you a video on Messenger of Fenrir meeting the newest member of their family. So cute. Oh, I love Fenrir. He's beautiful. Who is the newest member of the family, though? Michelle says, we'll be back. Have to go help the husband put a belt on the tractor. No worries, Michelle. We shall see you when you come back. I'm sure I will still be here. I've only been going for two hours, 40 minutes so far. Feels like longer because I'm actually, I'm actually sewing something, I think. Jojo says, I'm on Team Purple. It's working for me well for me, though I know all bodies are different. Oh, don't get caught up again. Um, first Harry Potter make is Molly Weasley's Christmas jumper. Everyone is going to get one. Awesome. 
Oh, I've, yeah, I, I want a Weezy jumper. I wonder if Mum will knit me one. Yeah, I've switched over to purple, um, Jojo. I'm going to give that a try. I liked the amount of points I got on green, but the things that I enjoy eating, I um, I was constantly just using up all the points. And then I also wanted to have a couple of beers and that was just sending me over the edge. So uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to try purple instead. Barbara says, sorry to change the book topic, but anyone is anyone registered registering for the virtual sewing weekender in June 13th and 14th? This will be my first weekender since I live across the pond. I, yeah, I want to. I think it's going to be really interesting. I think there's quite a few of the peeps that, um, I think I've said that they've got tickets. And it's nice that it's a virtual one this year so that, like you say, lots of people from across the pond can come too. I wonder if Pattern Review are going to do anything similar with their weekender. That would be nice. Duvalet says, and how is your jaw? Particularly bloody awful today. Um, it's been good for quite a while, like, you know, just minimal amounts of background level of crapness. But today has been particularly crap like uh I don't know if you guys if I think I told you guys but they've moved my appointment back because it was supposed to be at the beginning of February and it got moved and it got moved and it got moved and it's now at the end of August and obviously I do understand why I'm not saying it's all about me it is just a little bit frustrating so um yeah particularly shit at the moment Excuse my French. Nimoy says, I might have to switch away from cutting out soon. My neck is not happy, but the fabric is so cute. What are you going to switch to, Nimoy? What are you going to do instead? Claire says, his dad's sister had a baby in January, but because of COVID, they hadn't met. Also, he was very sad this week as his friend, the disabled lovebird, died. Oh. Fenrir. Deb says she's just reg registered for the sewing weekend, as has Nancy. It's very cool. Jesus says, I can't sew and chat at the same time to Barbara. And I've caught up with the chat. Oh no. <laughs> Barbara says, Julie, I might have that problem too. I think from everything that I've heard from people that actually went to the physical ones, they, they kind of mostly said that there wasn't much sewing that getting done. It was more chatting. That would be me as well. Nimue says, I hope I'll get the last few plate pieces cut out to start the actual sewing. Otherwise, there's always crochet. This is true. Don't persevere too much that your neck really hurts, though, Nimue. Julie says, my early new username for the chat was Lovebird. Oh. My tummy it will not stop, stop rumbling. I don't know what's going on with me today. Oh, I need to cut. Oh, 
<laughs> my stomach is making so many noises. It's, it's not good. Anna says, my son asked if you read the World War Z book. No, I haven't. It's not my kind of genre. Oh, have I? Isn't it? No, I've, I've seen the film. Why do I feel like I have maybe have read it? So Lily Bell says you need ice cream. We don't have any ice cream in the house. Noelia says she's off to FaceTime a friend, might see you later. Thank you for hanging out with us, Noelia. It was lovely to see you. Rachel Lynn says we all need ice cream. Yes. Yes, we do. You're not wrong, Rachel. Rachel Lynn. Deb says, trying to sew and eat feast ice cream at the same time it hasn't been one of my brightest ideas. It is lovely. Fiona says, hi everyone, what have I missed? Did anyone see the last LSS space station going over the UK last night? No, I didn't. And um, not miss much, I'm just hand sewing in the waistband of my circle skirt that I have changed from a dress into a skirt because I didn't like how the bodice of the dress was coming out. But I love the fabric so I wanted to salvage it. Christine says, Hub's got some tiramisu ice cream for pudding last night. Ooh. I can never decide if I like tiramisu or not because of the coffee taste. I'm not a coffee fan. Apparently one of the neighbor's dogs is annoying Susie, which is why she's being all fierce outside. Duvalet says, sorry to hear that, love. I hope the August appointment goes as well as planned. Fingers crossed. Uh, fingers crossed I hear from the dentist soon as well as to when my wisdom teeth extraction can happen because I would like those out a lot. I would like those out very, very much because I think that's where the pain's coming from. Although the dentist and the surgeon have all poo pooed that and said that's not where the pain's coming from, but I think it is because that's the area that the pain happens majority of the time. And I don't get much, I do have the occasional clicking from the TMJ, but I think, I think the pain is the, is the wisdom teeth. So, yes, we shall see. We shall see. I mean, it's June tomorrow, isn't it? Like, it's going weirdly quickly and very slowly all at the same time this year. It's, I mean, obviously, it's a very weird year. Anna says, my son and I like popsicles, ice creams, keep a few in the freezer. See, I, I like the self-control to not eat the entire box in one sitting, which is probably another reason I got chubby. I think it's boredom eating, because like last night I was not hungry at all, but I needed to eat something because it was just, it was dinner time and, and I, sh you know, I, it just, I, yeah. So I ended up um, having a tiny little snack, but I just, I wasn't hungry at all. Cause I'd had a big, 
a big lunch on purpose, like purpose purposefully had a big lunch. Um, but it was more eating out of habit than actual hunger. And it, like I say, it was just because of the time of day that it was. Duvalet says, have you looked into visiting the chiropractor as some of the peeps recommended? Um, not before all of lockdown happened, um, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just kind of try anything that I can to try and deal with this until August and then on. We'll see, I mean, oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I think the dog's given up barking at the neighbor's dog, which is good. Susie has um, re been really funny to be on walks with because she, because um, she's basically blind now, uh, she kind of sometimes doesn't even notice dogs because they don't, they don't give a crap about her, so they don't say anything or bark at her when we go past, and then. Like other times the dog can be completely silent and something or like the wind in, is in the right direction or something. And then she'll just start screaming at the top of her lungs. And like the amount of times we have to apologize. And then there's quite a lot of people that are walking their dogs off leads at the moment, which you're not meant to be doing. And um, they're coming over to try and say hi to the to Susie and Susie will bite them. So I'm having to go over and just be like, look, I'm really sorry, but we have a very antisocial dog. And um, please, could you put yours on your lead on the lead? I, you know, but she is a feisty little creature who doesn't really like anyone except people. So, Deb says, I'm not a huge ice cream fan, but every now and then I get a craving for one. I wasn't even hungry after my lunch. That's maybe why I am more than a little chappy. Yeah, I, I have um, impulse control issues when it comes to food. Like, if I I, I have zero portion control. Like Wilson, he's got bars of chocolate because he used to get a daily food allowance for Pret-a-Manger um, from his work of like eight pounds for lunch. And he'd always buy one of those little 99p bars of chocolate or the chocolate covered almonds as, as kind of a um, way to use up the whole eight pounds. And um, when he found out that I prefer dark chocolate over milk chocolate, he started getting the dark chocolate one. So there's a little stack of them in the cupboard for me whenever I, I go over, which is very sweet of him. Um, but he likes he likes chocolate, but not to the same, not to the degree where he has zero self-control over, over it. And, you know, he still has a stack of chocolate in his cupboard. If I'd been there, that would have, like, that would have lasted a week. If that, like the um, chocolate covered almonds the minute I discovered how amazing they were, he had four packets in there. And I think that lasted two days. <laughs> Thankfully, he's not like Joey. He's quite happy to share his food, which is, which bodes well, because otherwise we probably would have fallen out. But yeah. Deb says, we have a dog similar as she's got older. She is very angry. She's partially blind, so I think it's fear as well with her. Yeah, I, I mean, Susie's always been like this. She just doesn't like other animals. And um, clearly wasn't socialised properly when she was a puppy. And then in Saudi Arabia, she lived there for five years and there really aren't any other dogs there. So, you know, she never kind of interacted with any other animals. And she, she's just got to the point where she's, it's her world. And we're all just allowed to live in it kind of thing. Mm. She's a strange little puppy. Very cute though, which is good.
Okay, so waistband is finished. Shall go and put this on a pinchy pinchy hanger and we shall see what the, um, oh, I need to press the back seam, don't I? We'll do that and then we'll see what the uh, hem looks like. Oh, my bum's gone numb from sitting still too long. <laughs> That's not good. Okay. Turn you guys around. Sal says, weird ice cream fact about me. I don't get brain freeze. I get lower back pain. That is weird. Um, Alex says to Sal, I don't like very cold food. So I put my ice cream in the microwave. I really like um, my like ice lollies and like Mars, Mars ice creams and things like that. I really like them to be very kind of very gooey. Uh, like the raspberry... Magnums are my favourite, and those ones I let to I, I let sit for about ten minutes before I eat them. Julie says to Sal, "I get the freeze just under my eyes." Ooh. Alex says, "I always believe I can eat far more than I can. I always ask Hedgehubby to buy me the biggest watermelon, which he does, and then he watches me suffer and laughs." <laughs> right, let's get this pressed. I'm going to be testing this from the other side, actually, thinking about it. That's better. Pinchy, pinchy hanger. Let's have a look, see what the hem looks like. I think I can get away with that. It is ever so slightly lower at the back, but I reckon with the protrusion of my butt that will be fine, so I'm going to sew some bias binding onto that. Oh, I'm going to turn that light on as well. It's starting to get darker. Right. You can't really tell that that's a border print, can you? So. Oh. <laughs> there you go. I like how it looks, though. I think it's pretty. So, yeah. Let's turn you back around this way. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Alex says, I'm going to have 12 ki kilos of watermelon later, or I will attempt to. Claire says, my Jack didn't like dogs, cats, men, bikes, hats, men, hats, men in hats on bikes. <laughs> Loved my guinea pigs, though. Fenrir likes everything except my neighbour's cats. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, I'm going to shut the window. I'm getting a bit chilly. Barbecue hasn't started yet, so there's no good smells. Um... 
Julie says, I just ate to eat too much. My stomach grows to about the double the size and then I sit back and groan multiple times. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Um, Sarah hunts by all off type of barbecue. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of the catch up. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. Lynn says, I'm late to the party. Hope everyone is well. What have I missed? Not a lot. Uh, Deb says, oh, I've got a feast down the front of my top. Mr. Grand Prix just said, I did I really expect to wear a white top and not slop it down? <laughs> Julie says, last boy just showed up. Be right back. Vicky says, hi, Sean. What are we doing today? Uh, I'm attempting to rescue this from its disastrous state as a dress. And... I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out, although I'm never showing anyone the inside of this one because it is a mess. But I am happy enough with how the hem has been leveled that I am going to hem it. Because why not? So, by binding, take off the zipper foot. Don't drop the zipper foot. Normal presser foot on. Tell it the normal presser foot is on because it won't let me put the needle down in the middle of the middle point otherwise. By <laughs> finding in lap. This new one arrived yesterday. Hello. Hello. You alright? Yeah. He's got his fancy shirt back on. I like my shirt. I've changed, washed, clean. He's clean. He can go cook food now. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I'm here, <coughs> here to give a message to uh, Martin. Martin? Oh, uh, yeah. I think Rachel's still here. Yeah. Go for it, mate. Great shirts. <laughs> You've got to be more demanding. Oh. And Larry, Larry, when you're on the tractor, mate, you need something that is equal to the beauty of the tractor. Uh, <laughs> yes. I don't think Larry, demand. I don't demand. Think Larry and Larianna, Larry and Lorianna here as yet because it's too early on the uh, west coast. But she'll probably okay. watch it back. Get a message to him. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the inside of his garage. Yeah. He needs the shirts yeah. to go with the kit. <laughs> I think Lorianne does make him clothes, you know. Does she? I think so, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's good. Right. You haven't got much of a stash of fabric left at the moment, have you, for shirts for you? Uh, no. You've got a few, but you're not overly keen on them. Oh, you've still got some. I yeah. oh, haven't cleaned up properly. He only went to the tablet. Handies are, are good. <laughs> Actually, close up, they're not that good. But, you know, if Monty Don can have ingrained <laughs> fingers like this, so can I. Okay. It's good enough for Monty Don, it's good enough for that, apparently. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Could you shut the door after you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm dismissed. Not, no, when you leave, you were making leaving motions. You don't have yeah, to yeah. leave. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> He's very hard done by. really don't know how Papa copes with us all, you know. Right, anyway, bias binding. I'm going to sew it on, then I'm going to press it round, and then I'm going to slip stitch that into place as well. Because that's my preferred finishing method. Uh, for circle skirts. I want to introduce Rachel Makesy to bias binding. It's for, not so much for her costuming efforts because they, they don't have to hold up to the test of time, do they? But I really want to um, show her for um, 
for um, her like stuff that she wants to add to her wardrobe, like the last two things that she made, which I really liked. I kind of, I'm kind of getting into this. I want, I want the, the you know, billowy sleeve shirts and the little waistcoats or corset type tops and um, things. Yeah. Uh, Rachel says, be back in a bit. Got to watch the new spaceship dock in the International Space Station. Very cool. I saw, I, I haven't, didn't see it take off, but I've seen pictures of it taking off. So yeah, Harriet, uh, yes. Harriet says, yes, I thought that for her skirt hems. I really, really want to go over and help, help so. <laughs> not that I'm an expert at all. And I mean, she's doing bloody well, given that she's not really been sewing for that long. Um, but yeah, I want to go and show her all the things. And I also really, 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 really want her to have a cut, proper cutting table so she's not crawling around on the floor. But I suppose she's in her 20s, so she can do that without being regretting it the next morning. I cannot. I think I'm going to have to play around in my fabric stash this evening. I was thinking, because uh, I read uh, Emily Hallman's Why She Sews in Collections blog post, and having watched Mariah today as well with her capsule collections, because I wanted to make one for the holiday in September. Obviously, we're not going now, so I don't need to wait to do that. And I have a whole bunch of fabrics that I want to use for that collection. So I think I'm going to have a play around in my fabric stash tonight and sort of get some bits and pieces out and see about putting things together and what I want to make with them. That's the one thing I don't like about having my patterns down here and my stash up at mine. I'd like them both in the same place. Um, for for that that kind of like playing around, but I have a fairly good idea of what I what fabrics I want to use. Anna says, I used to wear puff sleeves with corset style tops. Was going to restart the sewing those items. Yeah, you should. It's a nice style. I think it would suit you as well. Uh, Nimue says, I wanted to tell Rachel to let her circle skirts hang so the bias can drop and bias binding for the hem, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. There's another one. Um, Cat's Costumery, I think it is. I, I re I've been really enjoying watching her... Um, kind of channel as well she was doing a Gibson girl style, I think it's cat's costumery she was doing a Gibson Gibson girl style um bodice like shirt with inset lace and it was just so pretty Rachel makes these backing music in my head now. You know, she has quite a few different vintage ones, but she uses the sort of same few quite frequently. I've got the up, up, up one in my head. <laughs> oh dear. Elizabeth says, what is the sewing weekender that Barbara, Barbara Eckenfels mentioned? Um, so the Fold Line and English Girl at Home did a actual physical in-person weekender in Cambridge. Um, and 
obviously this year that's not possible so they're doing a virtual one and uh, so if you have a look at the fold line uh, Elizabeth then the details will be on there you guys and watch enjoy watching on youtube <laughs> and she says and says now the up 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 song is in my head there are worse things i suppose yes there are i'm glad it's not just me though because it's not going away <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh um there's a channel called Lo lopsy l-e-o-p-s-i-e -E, i think it is and she sometimes does sewing, but most of hers are vintage hair tutorials and things like that. Um, but yeah, her, her sewing is always interesting as well. twice. I wonder how many times it's going to break the whole time round. My stomach is still rumbling. That's not good, is it? Um, Anna says, have you ever gone on a sewing retreat? Not yours. If so, did you, what did you make and where was it? Nope, never. Um, not, I didn't really know of any. Um, other than the sewing weekender and I was never able to get tickets for that one. It was always too slow. Always too slow. Okay. And Bernie Seed says good morning from the US. A eh? good morning. Alex says, have fun everyone. I'm off to battle with my watermelon in the garden because it's less messy and because I might entertain my neighbours. Thank you and bye. Thank you for joining us, Alex. Um, Julie says, I love that she, like me, uses bed linens, tablecloths and other household fabrics. Yep. H.E. says, closet historians and Angela Clayton. Love both of those. Patreon of both of theirs, actually. Uh, Sal says, watch, I watch of sewing videos, model makers and gaming channels mainly. Nimue says, I enjoy Noelle from her his historical costuming as well. Oh, cool. Alison says, do you still buy Lady McElroy from Minerva? I haven't. I, I, the only reason I buy from Sherwood's is because they usually have amazing discounts. And uh, Le, Minerva Crafts, I am a member of theirs, so I get a 10% discount off. But the Sherwood fabrics are, discounts are usually better. So that's the only reason I buy from there. But I know for you guys in outside of the UK that Sherwoods charge a lot of money for their shipping. So Minerva Crafts might work out better for you um, in the long run. 
Marianne says, hi, all, no sewing here, but did just have two dinosaur parties for my best five-year-old, um, me made son. Oh, that's so cool. Julie says, I watch kittenish behavior religiously and lots of other, and lots of list videos. Marianne says, don't worry, restrictions are lifting. Olivia says, costuming drama is a great channel. I shall look that one up, thank you. Yeah, I just, um, this morning I've kind of like discovered, I think, like I said, it was Mariah Patty. And then I kind of put in history bounding and I didn't really have a chance to get through having a look at the, some of the channels that came up um, before I needed to come down here to do some work. So I'm looking forward to kind of having a look at those later. Um costuming drama I shall check her out like watching all these things though it makes me want to like I say make those kind those kind of clothes and then also uh, watching Angela Clayton do her peacock Charles Worth gown and having seen like red threaded ironwork gown and the peacock gown that Kathy Hayes um attempting and things I I nearly asked for the Charles Worth book for my birthday it's a 60 pound book um but I was just like oh I want to make a Charlesworth gown I've never made anything like that before in my life but I want to make one now so and I probably will at some point because I enjoy those kind of things I think the um Charlesworth book will go on my Christmas list I was determined to have fabric this for my birthday this year. feel about one month if I did try and tackle like a giant project like my butterfly dress that I want to make or something like that that would probably end up being it would just be twirls and like making the undergarments and things like that for that month and as I say I have no experience in that kind of field so I have no idea um <laughs> if it would be any good or how I would it would end up being so yeah would you guys be interested in seeing something like that? Or should I try and keep that as like a, a side project? finished with this I am going to change the needle and um, oil the machine because it's starting to sound like it needs it um, but I don't want to do it mid project um where did I get to I love watching Stitched Up um, videos when they come on YouTube on a Monday when Sean has her day off. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I have a video coming out tomorrow because you'll, you'll have noticed there wasn't a vlog this morning. I have filmed yesterday and I've scheduled it for tomorrow. I remembered this this week because obviously we've got the hangout today. So I thought I'd rather than have two videos in one day, I would put the Saturday vlog up on Monday. So there will be a video tomorrow. <laughs> I need to remember to do that more often. Uh, Claire says I like watching Karina of lifting pins and needles I've learnt a lot from her mainly little tips and ways of doing things Rachel of course yes yes Shona says dinosaur birthday parties are the best yeah I want a dinosaur birthday party is it too late <laughs> it's a month my birthday was a month ago is it too late <laughs> 
Oh, I get no, I get my birthday time uh, do over when we, when when I can see Wilson again. I shall tell him I want a dinosaur birthday party. He will very much be impressed and do that for me. <laughs> um, Natalie is off. Have a nice day. Thank you for joining us, Natalie. Marianne says Angela uh, Clayton's peacock dress is amazing. It is, isn't it? It really is. I've wanted to do a peacock trained dress for ages as well. The sheer expense, though. So I'm glad that she's um, having it sponsored. Only Seed says, I recently came across your channel and I love your style. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome. Welcome to the craziness. Anna says, Alicia Estelle's channel. I haven't heard that, that one, so I shall have to check that out. Marianne says to Shona, it was awesome for the dinosaur party. H.E. Show says that would be awesome. Alison says, I also love watching Mishu makes. Um, it's like catching up with old friends. And Button and Pip, I love her energy. And Devon Threads, yes, I love all of those as well. Caroline says, Hat to Hem is pretty fun to watch. That's new to me. I shall check that out. Sassy Bully says, I would watch. Eileen says, just popped in. Love the idea of a big project. Thank you, Eileen. And hello. Uh, Christine says, yes, I'd watch that. Marianne says, yes, please. Nimoy says, I'm all for giant, extraordinary projects every now and then. Caroline says, it would be fascinating to watch. Lynn says, yes, please, would be interesting at least. Oh, gosh, I think I'm going to have to do it now, aren't I? Eileen says, I watch, enjoy watching Angela and Bernadette and sometimes Kathy Hay, but purely as a spectator, spectator, spectator sport. I have no desire to make myself way too much like hard work for me. I think it's one of those things that um, they enjoy wearing those kind of things. So they, they, you know, that's why they make them. But then also, I guess it's kind of like the, I want to make an evening gown, like a properly over the top evening gown. I suppose I could wear it to the, gala night on the retreat couldn't I I mean I technically that's meant to be a wear what you like as fancy or as non-fancy as you like so um yeah Alison says I do like Angela Clayton but find that she talks too fast and it's hard to hear too still it doesn't put me off her channel Jojo says I have the Charles Worth book on my birthday and Christmas list for a couple of years no one's taken the hint might have to buy it myself because I'm worth it do you see what I did there I did Jojo <laughs> Eileen says, I agree, Karina is great. Yes. Jolie says, that's a great idea. Jojo says, yes to big projects. That's just because you're just about to take on me now, Jojo, and you want, you want some moral support while you're, you're doing yours. <laughs> Sassy Bully says, Angela, Kate just, Angela Clayton just turned down the speed on the, on the video. And yes, you can make it slightly slower. Julie says, it's never too late to have a birthday party. No, and especially this year, when for anyone who's had it in quarantine, Wilson did agree that I can have um, take two. So, concentration face again <laughs> Jojo says damn it rumbled <laughs> um, gin and pins we all need something to wear what to wear to ne next year's dressmakers ball that's true yeah um, Eileen says yes you must make and wear to the retreat too late to back out now damn it <laughs> <laughs> Julie says I kind of want to make more history banding projects I want to be more like Bernadette I don't want to sew like Bernadette I admire her sewing techniques and the fact that she loves sewing by hand and on her old vintage sewing machine but I hi, oh, I would miss this no <laughs> but yes I do love her projects definitely 
Um, Alison says, I would watch that, so yes, please. Harriet says, I made a Victorian ensemble as part of my uni work. My degree is in costume production. They're very big projects, yes. Uh, Julie says, at least in the way I look. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think um, I think that's the thing. I, I like, I, you just pick, pick a style or pick an era or pick a genre or, or pick modern day clothes, but in fabrics that you love like I do, so yeah. I mean, like, look, we've got naked ladies, snakes and flowers. <laughs> That's typical me. <laughs> Christine says, I bought the So La Di Da Destiny pattern just to have a go at one day, even though I'd only wear it around the house pretending I'm in Downton Abbey. I love that pattern. And Caroline says to Jojo, Melissa at Hat to Hem has done a Mina Harker gown. Ooh. Ooh. I think Karen's just arrived. Uh, the um, that this this chat's not caught up with that chat yet because I've got Mum's laptop down here. Here we go. Karen says, "Hi, peeps. I've been watching for an hour and making pancakes, having breakfast now, and loving the YouTube channel suggestions. I need something to fill in non kittenish behaviour time. Yeah, this is great, isn't it, Karen? I'm getting some new new channels to to have a look at. So I'm going to be using the um, African wax print that you got me for my birthday. I think it was two or three years ago now, Karen. I'm going to be using it next month. I am excited. Slightly terrified of it because it's got stones all over it. Because, of course, I bought the one with stones all over it. But I am excited. I remember when I was a kid, I used to um, draw what I now realise are basically French aristocrats in panniers with giant, floofy robe a la anglaise over them. Um, so I kind of want to recreate one of those as a giant project as well, just because it's the sort of thing that I used to draw all the time as a child. Um, and I think I just drew them like that because there was a bigger surface area to draw flounces and frills and stuff on. But it, now looking back at what I used to draw, it is um, the, um, is it panniers, panniers? You know, the big kind of like hip cage ones. Although I do think out of all of the giant gowns, I think my favorite is the Civil Era, Civil War era, there you go, uh, gowns from America. I think they are beautiful. And I like that, the Scarlet O'Hara shaped um, of the skirts. So, yeah. I get to. Jojo says, yes, I saw her channel, but I haven't watched any yet because I want to figure it out for myself as I go, but I'm looking forward to watching it after the fact. Oh, cool. Sal says to Julie, I just subbed to your channel. Awesome. Karen says, lol, can't wait to see what you make with it. I have quite a few and still terrified of them. Oh, I'm glad it's not just me, Karen. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. Um, I'm planning on doing big prints um because you know I've done border prints this month and success with that like I've made three things once I finished this skirt um but yeah I was planning on doing kind of like big prints because I want to use those parrot cockatoo uh the, yeah the cockatoo panels that I got I also want to use the fabric that you got me because that has a giant print on it so I'm planning on making a gourd circle skirt with it for and make it as big as I can because the fabric's already big and poofy so I want to make you know I want to really emphasize the big and poofiness of it 
I'm, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. So, um, yeah, but I'm glad it's not just me that's scared of them. That's good. <laughs> Julie says, thank you to Sal. Caroline says, that's freaky. Carry on. Don't lose your head. Has just started lots has just started lots of panniers. Um, Julie says, the internet on my computer just went tits up. I'm on my phone for now. Nimue says, if you're diving into Robe à la Française, look at Enchanted Rose costumes. She has a whole series on how she did hers. Um, I actually have some simplicity patterns for an overskirt and an unders and the under underpinnings for it. Um, I do think that if I do attempt something like this, a lot of it's going to be based on actual paper patterns rather than making it up myself because I am not brave like Jojo and I don't want to figure it out myself. I want to use all the knowledge that other people have already gathered and I want to uh, I want to take take advantage of that and try and save myself as many headaches as possible. Um, so yeah, more than likely I will be using patterns. It's definitely my comfort zone. this all around a little bit more I'm pleased that this skirt is not as much of a disaster as I thought it was going to be because I really do love this fabric so Alison says if any Aussie peeps are wanting a copy of the Charlesworth book Booktopia have the book at special price of $79.80 how much is that in English monies Might it be worth buying it there and having it shipped over? says I have a chemise a la reine on my really must make list I believe I know what that is Jin and Pin says I like Susan at so custom she mainly uses her blocks to make her clothes but I just love her techniques and finishes me too that, that last dress that she put up oh that was pretty that was very pretty I'll start cursing my love of these giant skirts because I have to hem the bugger. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that back up at mine actually. I'm gonna start working on this one um next because the uh, other one otherwise we um we could be here all day just hand sewing. Um Christine is off, got to go for now, been great hanging out. Bye-bye. See you later, Christine. Thank you for joining us. Alison says, I love the red dress that Claire wore in Outlander. 
gathering of the skirt looks like gathering that is used for smocking. Yeah, I think it's cartridge pleats, which are sewn on slightly differently, aren't they? Lynn says, yes, I like Suzanne, it's so custom too. Yeah. Sal says to Julie, nice to put a face voice to the text I've been reading for ages. Yeah, it is. I, that's one thing I love about all your YouTube channels because it's, it's like you get to actually um, sort of meet the people, as it were, meet the peeps. of its own today and it's all escaping. $79.80 Australian, do Australian dollars is worth £43.12 uh, English sterling. I wonder how much shipping would be. Probably, it would probably cost, it would build up the price to, so it was 60 quid again, wouldn't it? Rachel Lynn is back. Hello. OK. 
Okay. Right, so I'm gonna press the bias binding around to the inside, then I'll hang this up and then I shall switch over needles, thread, oil the machine, clean it out a little bit, and then we can try and see if I can do anything with this. That is the plan. We've been going for three hours, 40 minutes so far. And I've finished the skirt. I mean, you know, I didn't sew it from scratch. All I had to do was put on a waistband, but still, that's actually progress from last week, isn't it? So maybe I will just tilt you back a little bit. There we go, that's better, isn't it? Right. Need some more water. Okay, right. Let's get this ironed. I know I'm not the only one that loathes ironing in real life, but I don't mind doing it for clothes as I make them. Oh, I did just need to trim off. A little bit of excess. Does anyone else find that when they um, come to do circle skirts and they've leveled the hem, when they come to press it, they sometimes feel that it doesn't look circular? It looks like there's weird points in certain areas, but when you have it on, it's level. Please tell me it's not just me. It's usually the, around the seams that I find that I end up with weird kind of pointy bits. But like I say, when they're on their level, I still want one of those vintage um, hem stand things that they kind of, they, they stand on the floor and they've got like a little, they, they've got a little pincer and they grab the fabric and you can pin through so that you, you I, I really want one of those. I've only ever seen them in America. I've never seen them in the UK. And like I say, I've only ever seen vintage ones of them as well. Never like a modern version. I can't read the chat from here. I'm sorry. I'm going to just be kind of like randomly waffling, asking you questions and then not reading your responses because I really can't read it without like leaning right over the iron. And that's probably not the best thing to do when it's this full of water and it's this steamy because I will end up burning myself. And we don't want that. That would be bad.
No singed edges today. I've still got that stupid song in my head. I'm going to have to go and watch Rachel Makesy videos after this. Nearly there, nearly done. Ha ha, tiny little bit left to do, like a couple of inches and then we're done. Yay, right. Let's hang this up and then see what I can do about this bewitch dress. Bugger, that looks small. It's a 28 inch waistband though, so it should fit. Yeah, after all, after all this, if it doesn't fit, that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? I mean, it wouldn't, it would be annoying, but... Done. Yeah, it's a little, oh, the, the, the um, bias binding's hanging down at the back, so it's, it's not that much longer. But, yay. Gonna hem that this evening up at mine, keeping the uh, thread out of Chiana's little mouth. Irritating kitty that she is. Why does she wanna eat thread? I mean, really? Hello. Right, let's take you down. So, where did I get to? Uh, HSO says, finishing up a shirt at the moment, only the hem and buttons left. My nemesis, you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> I hope. Julie says to Sal, my sister is actually pretty angry at me for that. She didn't really want hers, she didn't really want hers back. <laughs> so did you get a new one? Uh, right. Anna says, it's not just you. I thought the same when pressing circle skirts. Caroline says, it's not just you. I have that too. Nimoy says, got cutting my cutting finish with some shoulder exercises along the way. That's good. Julie says, I have one of those. I don't use it too often. Um, Nimoy says, I have loads of fabric to iron to cut out two skirts. Not something I look forward to. Caroline says, I've got about nine meters of cotton lawn to iron in a white. It should be dry by now. Then I can remeasure re it. I love that type of ironing with Audible to keep me company. Yeah, that kind of ironing I can do. Gin and Pins says, I'm falling in love with my newish iron again. I accidentally melted some interfacing and got glue on the sole plate. After a couple of puffs of steam, it's all clean again. Ooh, nice. Claire says, my past in... It's past pumpkin time here, so I'm off to bed. Night, night, peeps. Good night, Claire. Thank you for joining us. Sal says, I'm not going to lie. If I saw a woman walk down the street with that skirt, it would capture my attention. It is a pretty skirt. Right, let's have a look at these. So I think what I want to do with this is I actually want to, because you know I need to lower the neckline just a little bit because I've chopped a chunk out of this for getting rid of bulk from the zip so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unpick the lining from the bodice 
to just around where I've started notching it, I think. Yeah, just about an inch or so before the shoulder seams so that I can turn the fabrics. Oh, do I even need to do that? Can I just, can I just turn it through as is and get it flat enough? Might be able to. Because I want to put in a gentle V. Oh, I think I might be able to do it like this. Okay, yeah, let's try that. Saves me having to unpick more things, doesn't it? And then I wanted to lie on top of each other. This is, let's see if I can do this. So it's all nice and flat and I can get the same kind of slope. Yeah, should be able to do this. Right, okay. So I'm gonna pin these together. I just want to cut like a gentle V into this because I don't want to cut too much off of the back. Neckline because there's girls then I don't want to cut like their legs or anything off if I can avoid it. Yeah this is going to work this is good okay. I'm literally making this up as I go along by the way. So that's this. Julie says, yum, I smell French fries. You're making me hungry again. Dad's not even started on the barbecue yet. Okay. Right, so I'm gonna use one of my, I'm gonna use my friction pen. And I'm going to just go and grab my French curve. You can see that's the um, double darted bodice for the Vogue dress that didn't work out. So I'm going to have a play around with that uh, next month now, because it is next month tomorrow, isn't it? Right. This needs to be a really, really gentle curve. Nothing too major. Just to get rid of the bit where I've chopped off. Yeah, that'll do. That'll work. So I'll need to re-sew the shoulder seam in because I'm chopping that off. I mean, at this point with this dress, it can't get any worse. So, you know. Hello. Hello. My God, it's hot in here. Just anyway. had the iron on. I'm off screen, am I not? You are, yes. Time. Um, probably about an hour. Right, just trying to plan. I'm just um, saying like, that you haven't started the barbecue as yet. No. Because no, because somebody else, has, Julie's just said, I can smell French fries. And she, I said, I can't smell anything yet. Uh, no, 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 no. But I want to plan it so that you, you and mum can help with the salads. Okay. And um, I can get going. So about an hour. Okay. Which is not a problem for me at all. Good. Because as you know, I cope with anything. You do. Very flexible. Oh dear. Yeah, Sal says um, next month's here already for us here in Australia in the future. Yes. Right, I wanted to change the thread the, and the needle and oil it, didn't I? Because it's making clunky noises. And we don't want clunky noises. So let's do all of that. Hello. 
let's do all of that. Got a new sharps box, I filled my last one up. Oh, the dog's the dog's back in here and she's asleep in her bed, not complaining. Zeus. Usually she doesn't like having locked doors between her and mum and dad, but um, clearly she is happy to keep us company today, which is very pleasant. Okay. Let's give this a bit of a defluff. Jennifer, was say, Jennifer says, I was about to say the same, it's nearly 1am here. It's already June and you're in the future. Already June. Get all the fluff. Lots of fluff. Oh, giant bit of fluff under there. I know I've had this conversation with you before, but how do sewing machine shops get the inside of these machines so clean? Is it like little mini hoovers with mini hoover attachments? Because if it is, I want one. I want one. Right. Put some oil, because it was sounding a little clunky. And that. Okay, so I can close that. I need to put on a new needle. It is the right end. No, it's not. Needle. Eileen says, how do you dispose of your used needles? Conscious that that sounds like a dubious question. Um, so I had a little clover pin box um, and I filled that up and I duct taped it shut within an inch of its life. And then I put it in the recycling, having looked at what my local council does recycle. Um, if I'd taken it to the tip, I would have put it in the 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 metal ones um so yes uh you can also i believe take them to your local chemist but you might want to double check with your chemist that it will accept those types of sharps uh, uh, from you before you take it in but yeah no i know what you mean about it sounding dodgy what do you do with your used needles Um, yeah, that's what I did with my last box, but that box lasted me four years, three years filling that up. Okay. Um, 
Caroline says, where's your first sale? Julie says, just messing with you. <laughs> uh, Laurieann says, well, it's only 8 a.m. here in Oregon. Good morning, Sean and Sal and Julie and Eileen. Good morning, Laurieann. Dad was in here earlier saying that Larry needs to have shirts that match his garage. And I said, I think you do, you do sew for Larry, don't you? He was showing off his um, damselfly shirt. He's very proud of that one. Julie says, yep, Sean, one of those hoovering for a keyboard works nicely. Because I know it has to be suck, not blow. You can't use compressed air because you end up just blowing more fluff into your machine, which they don't like. Oh, I just dropped my zip on the floor. I have. <laughs> Larry Ann says, I've only made Larry one shirt. He's so deprived. <laughs> Don't tell dad that, he'll egg him on. <laughs> um, where did I get to? Shona says probably compressed air like they use from computers. Yeah, you don't want, that's the thing, you don't want to blow. You don't want to blow because that's bad. You want to suck, you want to suck all the fluff out. That could definitely get misconstrued, couldn't it? Uh, Gia's here. Hello, beautiful people. Hi, Gia. How are you, my lovely? Julie says you can also find ones that attach to your big hoover. Um... Caroline says to Shona, they say not to use compressed air because you don't want to crud, force crud further into the machine. Laurie says, I melted a hole in the top of the medicine bottle with childproof cap and just dropped them in. I haven't recycled them yet. Oh, that's a good idea. Julie says, I use an old jam jar. Eileen says, thanks, Sean. We'll start collecting mine and look into options for, for disposal. I do, I do think your chemist is a good, good place because it is that type of needles. As, and I don't think they recycle medical waste, but they do dispose of it carefully. So yeah, ask, yes. Um, Eileen says, good morning to Laurie Ann. Ronnie C says, did your dad make his shirt? No, mum makes shirts for dad. Dad is not a sewer. He's a critique of sewing, but he's not a sewer. Right. Let's um, try and continue these neck back necklines. I think this girl's just lost the tip of her shoe. I can live with that though. side. Shona says sharps taken to the chemist get incinerated as clinical waste. So uh, yeah, they're not going to end up where they shouldn't. Julie says you need a dust daddy attachment for the hoover. Okay. 
shall look into that. Eileen says, good luck with the dress, Shan. Shan, that's my name, how did I get that wrong? Um, off out to the park because I don't want to miss the chance to enjoy the lovely day. And she says to Anna, yes, she's coming to the retreat. She is all booked in. Julie says, it kind of looks like you're, like a spider catcher. Like, ah, yeah, I've seen that. I need to, I need to see if I can find one. Let's finish off this one. <laughs> Okay. okay, just realized that I've sewn it shut in a way that means that I can't put my zip in the way that I usually do, but I probably will unpick it because I like putting in my zip like that. I need to concentrate more. <laughs> Caroline says, Treacle has just come to say hello to you all. Hello, Treacle. Gia says, what am I working on today? I have finished a skirt, apart from the hand hemming, and I'm going to try and put a zip in this and finish the back hem and put bias binding on it. That's what I'm attempting to get done today. We shall see how that actually works out, though. I can't believe I've just done already fudged up it's because I'm not paying attention never mind can always unpick it again can't I <laughs> oh dear me and my unpicker are getting a lot of uh, a lot of activity today aren't we It'll be fine. Let's just press these creases out from the previous zipper. Do the other side. <laughs> you kind of have to giggle. because I'm chatting to you guys too much and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Right, so having just sewn that in, I'm going to just unpick a little bit so I can squeeze, so I can sandwich my zipper in between my lining and my outer fabric. Should have thought of that before I sewed it back into place. It's fine though. It's totally fine. Just going to keep saying that. These stitches are coming out much easier than the previous ones did and I only need, and need to unpick like a little bit so it's not the end of the world let's turn you back around Gia says haha I send my unpicking to my mother she can't sew but she loves undoing it she asked me do you have any unsewing to do oh bless well that's very handy need a little bit of room to sandwich in my zip or like I mentioned 
and I clearly just need to pay a little bit more attention. There we go. That's it, that's all I need. Right. Let's see if this zip goes in better than the first attempt today. I'm sure it'll be fine. I keep telling myself that, right? How did you know it was 35? This isn't as, that's freaky. So um, I have two types of feet on my machine. I have the ones with the sensors, this bit here, and then I have ones without sensors. And the ones with the sensors are meant to tell the machine, this is the type of foot this is. And the, these ones, obviously you have to tell it what type of foot this is. So I've just put on my, my, my invisible zip foot which is a non-sensor foot. And my machine's just gone, huh, zip foot 35. It's like, how did you know that? You're not meant to know that. It's freaked me out. <laughs> I mean, it's very good of it because it is the zip that is the foot that I've just put on, but that's freaky. Okay, so um, now that I freaked myself out. <laughs> okay. I don't wanna... That was why I did what I just did, and um, so that I have a mark of where I want to sew my zipper to. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Julia says, I need coffee. Coffee is here. That was good. Gia says coffee equals life. <laughs> Julie says I now need a break from embroidering but I have almost finished what I wanted to do today. That's good. Alison says I love the bewitched fabric. I had seen it on eBay. Might just have to buy it. I think I would make cushions with mine. Yeah I love this fabric. Which is why you can tell how much I love this fabric because I hate alterations and I pretty much basically just remade this dress. So um, yeah I do really love this fabric. getting the coils to get into the bit on the zip of uh, the foot is not easy oh <laughs> okay let's see how this goes You have to be a little bit careful because my waistband is ever so slightly shorter than the bodice of the dress which is slightly annoying because that's where I need the extra support but um, never mind. Not support space. I know what I mean. Sewing too close to the T. Please don't have sewn too close to the T. Think I'm good. Think I'm good. We'll soon find out though. When it goes over um, seams, like the waist seam, it can sometimes come out of the groove that the foot has to um, feed the teeth through. And that's when it can kind of sometimes end up sewing too close to the teeth, like I just said, I hope it hasn't done. Uh, Julie says yes to Gia. Sal says, I could write that as a horror story, ghost in the machine style. <laughs> yeah. 
when it suddenly becomes starts becoming self-aware i mean ugh. thankfully this thing's not mobile because if it was then it, it, yeah that would really freak me out okay. so it zips up uh julie says should i do a q a style video definitely Jenny Pins, bye bye, I'm off for a walk in the sunshine. Thank you for hanging out with us and enjoy your walk. The other side of this zip sign in. Oh, excuse me. Julie says, I thought about it to Anna and Sal when I got to 100 subs, but it seems a little late now. <laughs> Sal says it's not mobile yet. Don't give me nightmares. Uh, Julie says, Liv had a birthday yesterday. Anna says to Dewey, lols, ever so often. Hi, peeps. Been playing board games online with my daughter. Now finishing a dress to send to her. Oh, that's lovely. Right. Let's get the other side of this zip in. Determined to get this dress finished today. I'll have been productive then. The skirt and a dress. I mean, I know they're not, neither of them are from scratch, but yeah. Oh, um, guys. I, I said this at the beginning of the vlog, but I know some of you weren't there then and some of you may not have heard it, but I was thinking next week, how do you guys feel about sewing the closet case patterns poof with me? Because um, somebody suggested it as a thing to do all together at one of the hangouts. I thought it was a good idea because um, it's something that I want to make. It's something I have the fabrics for. It's kind of something that's going to be useful. And um, so, yeah, I'll... I'll put the details up in the peeps group, but I was wondering how you guys felt about doing that next weekend, next Sunday. You obviously don't have to sew the poof if you don't want to, um, but that's what I think I'm gonna have ready and set for next, next Sunday's hangout. If you would like to join me, that would be awesome. I'm really curious about the, um, seam allowance that I've used on my other Anna dresses now because some of them really are massively tight on me and I'm just wondering if I used a giant seam allowance like I did on this one. Because I might go in and pick those if I have. I really should have used my um, white chalk pen to mark in the waistband as well rather than the blue pen because I can only just see it. We'll go in. Okay. Julie says, please tell Liv happy birthday. Happy birthday, Liv. Many happy returns. I hope you were spoilt rotten. Michelle says, okay, back freezing, but back. 
thinking of putting my winter gloves and winter coat on. Oh, wow. While sitting at the sewing machine. Gia says, when you make something for someone else, do you tell, ask them for measurements or do you secretly measure an item of clothing they have? Um, so with Wilson, I secretly stole the item of clothing that I wanted to repair for him. Oh, come on. Oh, you haven't. No, you haven't. You just got the fabric caught in you. Don't be silly. Come on, you're going to work. There we go. Oh, that's a bit stiff. Please don't make me unpick another zip. I don't want to do that again. Um. Oh, why is <laughs> it's just, the zip's just broken. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> oh, you poxy thing. It was me thinking I was going to be all productive today. <laughs> Sorry about my French. It usually would be a lot worse than that. I haven't had that happen to me for ages. Anna, I know you had a similar issue with your zip the other day in your um, jumpsuit, didn't you? The zips are revolting at the moment. What have we done to them? How can we appease the zippers? Ah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so anyway, Gia, um, uh, secretly, it, it, it depends. Does the item of clothing that you want to measure to take their measurements, does it fit them perfectly? Is it? an easy thing to copy like a t-shirt perhaps that you maybe don't need to make any alterations to or do you want to give them a properly fitted garment because what you can do and what people used to do when they would buy a custom made gown or dress for their other half from me is they would give them a voucher to come and see me kind of thing so you could if it is a gift for somebody as in like a birthday present or something you can just sort of say like you know you're going to get and you can do that early. It doesn't have to be on the day um, so that you can take their measurements. But it really does depend on um, what, you, what you're intending to make for them. Um, but like I say, with, um, with the thing that I made for Wilson over, over the Christmas period, I, well, I just stole the jacket and um, copied the sleeves and re replaced that because I knew it fitted him. So I knew I didn't need any measurements. So... Uh, yeah, ever so often says measurements always, if possible, measure them myself. Yeah. Um, Michelle says, sure, the poof sounds like fun to make. And it does have a zipper in it, but it will be better behaved than this zipper. This is the third time I've unpicked a zip from this dress. Should have just left it in last time when I'd gotten it in and because I, I still don't think this is going to fit me even though I've let the seam out a little bit. So I should have just left it in when I knew it was going to be too small for me because I'd got it in and it was fine. Should have just finished the dress then. So, yes. Then lots of sympathy for the broken zip. Anna says that's exactly what happened to me. I completely finished the new look jumpsuit, went to put it on and pulled the zipper up and ping. Yeah. I haven't, I had that happen to me on a dress that I just finished. I went to do the zipper up and it just undid behind itself afterwards. Um, and that was the first and only time that's ever happened to me until today. So I suppose the amount of zips that I put in, I should, you know, it's not the end of the world, is it? But, grr. Never mind. 
Never mind. Leslie says, I know what a pain in the ass. Yep. Fads Lynn Harris says, laugh or cry. You're only, you're only two options. Yep. My zip broke. It was in. And After all that? Yeah. No, that one's done. Oh. <laughs> this, this is a second second zipper problem of the day. Oh, no. Are they all zips? No. No. I think I've worked out how the pattern goes now. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> now you just got to put it all together. Yeah, I'm going to do one and make sure it works. <laughs> Sal says I'm going to. He says he's guessing that I'm going to keep the rage off camera. No, that was it. I'm done now. I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I would have said a lot more blue um, blue language if you guys hadn't have been here. But I don't. Um, these. Um, these live streams. Oh, this is another reason that I'm not going to move this over to Zoom. But the advertising revenue um, on YouTube has diminished quite considerably over the last couple of months for obvious reasons. And these videos, whilst they do have a lot of ads in them, are very much helpful to me um, and my uh, revenue for the month and also view times. So that's, an, that's another reason I'm not going to move this over to Zoom or another platform is because this actually does do my um, statistics the world of good these videos and also the um, advertising revenue from them as well and um, if I start swearing a lot in them then the advertising revenue might be taken away because um, advertisers prefer family friendly content so um, yes effing and blinding at this zip is not going to make it any better and you guys are sympathizing with me, which is very much appreciated. So it'll be fine. We just keep telling ourselves that. It'll be fine. <laughs> Gia says rage against the machine <laughs> yeah Julie says time for food see you peeps either later or next Sunday thank you for hanging out with us Julie Adslin says, I've wanted to join in for weeks, but I work nights on Saturday and sleep most of the time you're live. I'm glad you could join us today. Thank you for coming. I was feeling all perky that I was going to get this dress finished today. I still might. I do have another brand new zip of the right colour. This is just very frustrating. Right. Um, Anna says, twice it's happened to me now. Arch nemesis big time. I did my tricks to reattach it and it was having none of it. So it came out the quick unpick, reins reinstalled another straight after I would have, or it would have sat there. Yeah. I feel like putting this one to the side at the moment. I won't, but I feel like it. And um, I think I've got some really tiny stitches here. Oh, I remember this being a nightmare to unpick. But I don't need to salvage the zip, so I can just, just don't want to make a hole in the fabric. Just 
careful not to stab my finger as well because then I really will swear. Where did we get to? Deb says, this is why the grumpy one says I couldn't have a YouTube channel as it would just be full of swearing. <laughs> That's all right, you can edit, edit it out or you can duck over it. You can like put a sound, sound effect quack over it, you know. Okay, that's out. So yeah, it's gonna be a fourth installation of a zipper. Let's see how we go with that one. Fun times. Having bitched about zips though, I wouldn't be without them because I wouldn't want to be sewing button and, and loop closures on everything or, um, I mean, as much as I like shirt dresses, you know, the button button and buttonhole closures aren't always effective or will work for everything. And then other closure methods like lacing and pinning, pinning yourself into your dresses and things. Wouldn't want to do those. So, you know, as much as I bitch about these stupid things when they go wrong, very grateful for them. But I would like a magic wand that would just have them magically work. That would be nice. Okay, one side's out. Let's do the other one. Little thing. Grr. Um, where did we get to? Lynn says, as we all know about dressmaking, tests our patience somewhat. Yep. Michelle says, do I rip this binding off or just make another one? This was my mock-up, so it can be okay. Um, if it's a mock-up, then is it just for like learning learning of how the pattern and you put the pattern together and stuff um because if you're going to use it then yeah take the binding off if it annoys you and put a new one on um but if it's just for literal twirl never to be seen the light of day then i wouldn't worry about it Uh. Sal says Sean's sounds would be the sonic screwdriver buzzing every time she swore <laughs> actually I do duck I do duck um I don't swear very often on the channel anymore though I used to um generally a dad when he's swearing at me <laughs> Michelle says, good, so starting another one. Awesome. Dad's just sitting outside looking out to sea. The food's not remotely started yet. 
Not that I'm hungry. Just I think he sort of said that we were going to start around about now, but we'll see. Wonder if I can unzip this now. So out of the way. Oh. Yes, the answer is yes. Yes, I can. So I think the I think the overall consensus was even if they don't sew it, then the sewing the the uh, closet case patterns proof for next. Sunday is a good idea. So I'll put the details up in the peeps group for the pattern and all the supplies that you'll need. And then we can go from there. I mean, I made a little bit of progress on this dress today, like sort it out the back neckline. Oh dear. I'll try putting a zip in again, unless I have to go and help with um, food. His dad's just moved from his little perch, looking out to sea. So I might be required to go in and do some helping with the foods. We shall see. We shall see. Yeah, he's making movements towards the barbecue. Sal says, do I have a replacement for the zipper? I do indeed. Deb says it would just be me going for, oh, for crack's sake. <laughs> you know, Deb, somebody might actually watch that just for that aspect of it. It's very niche, but. Anna says the zipper was invented in 1893 with little success. Then 1913, Gideon Sundback in Hoboken, New Jersey, invented the modern zipper. I think that is correct. Gia says, I've been trying to finish projects before starting anything new. It's not going well. Oh, perfect timing, Mum. Oh. Laurie-Anne's just said hi. Oh, hi. She's only sewn Larry one shirt. <laughs> his dad came in earlier model modeling his um, dragonflies. Oh, right. And saying that Martin and um, Larry needed to demand more fabulous shirts. I think dad's not <laughs> realized that the more demands and critiques he makes, the less he gets. Yes, <laughs> he might have noticed recently. <laughs> yeah, there's been no new shirts for a while. No, he's very nice about the last one. So yeah. I'm, I'm on a roll now. Yeah, he does. Um, he, he is, when, he, when he's complimentary, he's very complimentary. Yes. But he does like to have his little critique moments, doesn't he? Oh, he always finds something, yes. Right, I'm about to come and help. Right. I, was just, I was just saying that you were sitting looking out to sea and I was wondering when it was going to be time for me to come and help. I was determined to get this dress finished today. I put the zip in and the bloody thing broke. This dress what, is the zip first. broke? Yeah. After all that. No. can't believe it. How many times has this, that ever happened? This is the second time that's happened to me, but this is the third time I've put a zip in this dress. So when I finally uh, get a zip in it, it's going to be the right. fourth time. And if it doesn't go in, then I'm going to take the zip off and put this dress and make pillows out of it or something. No, no, no. <laughs> you can make a shirt. Uh, patchwork patchwork shirt which which girl do you want front and center 
I'm not making a I, shirt. I'd be bold enough to wear that through uh, the town centre. I can imagine. Yes. It's a good job that I sent that Barbarella fabric to Rachel. Yeah. Because yeah. it would have ended up being... I've got some in my stash. I shouldn't have said that out loud today. It's a fabulous shirt, actually, wasn't it? It is a fabulous shirt. Yeah. I'm sure he'll bring it down to the retreat in yeah, October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had my geometry. And lesson. to have the nous and the kahunas to wear it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I do think there comes a stage in your life, though, when you kind of just go, you know what, I'm going to wear what I want. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Mum's got hay fever, too. Oh, dear, yeah. Right. Okay, I think I'm ready now. Is my cardigan finished? Cut out. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, what's the um, time scale? Come on. As soon as I finish this, I'm done. <laughs> Look what I'm dealing with. Well, you know, I've got to time the meat on the grill I and all the rest of it. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. So I don't think I'm going to be finishing this dress today because I think I'm going to have to call it a night. So this is going to be one of the uh, shortest live streams I've done in a long time at four hours and 43 minutes. I'm glad I got the skirt done though. I, you know, obviously apart from the hand hemming, I'm going to do that this evening. Oh, and just so that I have got a dress on today, but I also have the fluffy socks on as well. Cause of course I do, cause my feet are always cold. Might have to sell this pattern when I finish, goodness me. <laughs> Is that what you've been doing in the Complicated, kitchen? yeah. Um, Geometry. I never was very good at geometry. But hey, I think it's going to work. I'm going to do one and. I'm going to do a test triangle. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It'll be all right. It'll be all fine. Right. Susie, you... she's been fine in here. Leave her alone. Oh. She's not whined once. Where is she? Oh, I think she's gone. That's probably why she has No, <laughs> Dad shut her in here with me and I, oh. I made a comment that she was behaving herself. Okay, I'm nearly done. I'm determined to get this done before I finish off today. My stomach is making all the strange noises today though. Clearly still hungry. Be gone, foul beast. So the dress is going back on the mannequin. <laughs> oh, yeah, dear. And, um, yes, I do have another zip. You can see there's the, there's the little badger I want. And out, out of the, um, I probably had seven or eight of these bags of zips. The other hat, the other one that I had that broke was not from this supplier. So I don't think it's that particular brand of zip or anything. So yes. Yes, but I need to go and help make the foods and things. So let's catch up with the... Uh... Sal says, I really swear in... I, in person, I really swear in real life, but when I play online games, I swear like a sailor. Somebody put up something the other day that said, um, gamers will know this, the harder you press the buttons, the stronger your attack. If you lean forward, it gives you f plus five determination. And um, swearing at everybody and everything always helps. Which did make me giggle. 
Anna says they were as early as epitypes, but diff by different people. Fascinating, all about these sewing related designs. Michelle says, bless you. Sal says, lol, yeah, but the same time, four hours is not short. No, this is true. Uh, Nimue says, enjoy your barbecue. Donna says, when I put in a zip on a wedding dress I made for my in-law, it broke three times. I was so glad I had to learn how to unpick with a razor blade from bridal sewing techniques on YouTube. Give it a try. Ooh, probably would end up cutting my own fingers, though. Deb says, suppose it might be a way to earn some money till I go back to work. <laughs> Just Deb quacking every cracking all over the place. <laughs> kind of want to see this now, Deb. Um, Laurie says you don't have to push it. We aren't keeping score. I know, Laurie. I know. I just I I really do enjoy hanging out with you guys. So yes. <laughs> Michelle says have a great barbecue. Enjoy your evening. Lynn says enjoy your barbecue. Alison says His Majesty Binks is meowing at me that it's time to go to bed, and Maya is curled up on my bed. So it's a good night for me. I'm looking forward to Tuesday for a new spotlight catalog. Ooh, exciting. Duvelay says, it was fun to hang out with you all. See you next week. Sal says, see you, Sean. Enjoy the barbecue. See you, peeps. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much for hanging out with me, guys. It was a lot of fun, even if that thing has ended up back on the mannequin. I may well actually just finish that during the week so that it's done and dusted because it seems to be cursed. Um, but yeah, I do have another zip to go in there. So I think I might just get that one done so it's, it's out of the way and I can move on to something else because it's really annoying me. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for hanging out with me. It has been a lot of fun. I do have a vlog going up tomorrow, which was yesterday's antics. There's a new item of clothing to show, show you, which I am happy with. It is a success. It's my second piece of border print that I've worked with this month, border print month. <laughs> um, but, yes, I do have a video going up tomorrow. The I probably... I think I will film tomorrow as well, so there shouldn't be a break this week, but we sh we'll see how all this behaves itself tomorrow, whether I want to film or not, because if it's not behaving, then I shan't, but we shall see. Anyway, um, yeah, I will see you all live next Sunday for definite. We're going to be making the closet case patterns poof. I will put the details for that up in the peeps group so if you want to sew along with me you can do and uh, yeah I shall see if I can end the stream gracefully so thank you for hanging out with me and I will see you all soon <laughs>